The following is a Mountaineer Sports Network presentation. The West Virginia Mountaineers and the Boston College Eagles from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Magnet Bank, the right bank in the right place at the right time. By Flat Top Insurance Agency, America's energy agency. By Walker Machinery and Beckwith Machinery, your Caterpillar dealers for West Virginia. By Wendy's, the Mountaineers and Wendy's are a winning combination. By your Mountaineer Chrysler Plymouth dealers, the competition knows it's the team to beat. By U.S. Air, with flights to over 100 cities in North America. At U.S. Air, we welcome all of our passengers, one at a time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Alumni Stadium on the campus of Boston College here in beautiful Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Tom Meese with Tony Caridia back on the Mountaineer Sports Network. And, Tony, the Mountaineers have racked up a lot of points over the last two opponents, but some serious questions will be answered here today. 94 points for West Virginia and victories over East Carolina and Cincinnati. The question, though, comes today for West Virginia's offense, just how good are they? East Carolina's defense and Cincinnati's defense, you could say, were marginal. We'll find out today against a good Boston College defense just where the West Virginia offense is. A lot of question marks also for Jack McNell's BC Eagles. They're 4-3, and three, coming off an upset loss at Rutgers. They've got question marks in the offensive backfield. They do. They've got some injuries to their starting tailback and their second string tailback. Jim Bell, their leading man on the ground, out with a hamstring injury. Mike Sanders, their second string man, has a deep thigh bruise, is questionable for today's game. So we might be seeing a guy by the name of Tracy Giles, who has only carried the football twice in his college career. Tony, you see and you cover this Mountaineer football team every day for the Mountaineer Sports Network. Uh, how important would you say that this game here is against BC and the overall scheme of things for the season? Well, this is a key game for West Virginia. There's no question this is the turning point of the season for the Mountaineers. A victory here today brings them up to 4-3. and three. They've got high confidence going into State College next week. A loss could be very detrimental for this club. Yeah, you got to have a lot of confidence going in to play Joe Paterno's club, especially since they were beaten so soundly last week. So it's a big ball game coming your way next to the Mountaineer Sports Network. We'll have the kickoff of West Virginia and Boston College in a moment. Tracy Giles and Tim Frazier are standing at their own two-yard line to receive the kickoff from Charlie Bauman. Now, I said the wind was negligible, but what little wind we have is behind the back of the kicker, Charlie Bauman. Uh, the flags at the very top of the stadium are waving, and it would indicate about a 10-mile-an-hour or so wind. However, the flags inside the bowl here, I should say semi-bowl, it's not enclosed really at the end zones, are not waving near as briskly. So we shall have to see as the afternoon goes along. But what win there is is at the back of Charlie Bauman. We're ready for college football. The Mountaineers seeking to get over that 500 mark taken on the Eagles of Boston College. And this will be Tracy Giles at his own goal line. Giles is at the 10. Cuts back toward the middle and he will not make the 20 yard line. Stopped at about the 19 and a half yard line. A whole host of Mountaineers special teamers are down there to make the tackle. Chuck Levinas was among them. And he's always one of the more active men on that special team. So it'll be first and ten for the Eagles of Boston College at their own 20. The offensive line for BC, Oliver, Bumpus, Scavone, and Doug and David Waddell. The backfield, Mike Power, number ten starts at quarterback, Jim Turner, Tracy Giles, Peter Casparillo, Darren Flutie, the brother of Doug, and Tom Waddell, the excellent split end. First and ten for Boston College. Casparillo, the tight end, goes in motion. Power, straight back to throw. He is going for Waddle at the 30-yard line. White was there to cover for the Mountaineers of West Virginia, and he was there in plenty of time as Waddle had no chance to make that catch. Free safety, Terry White coming over to add a courtesy tap just to inform Mr. Waddle that he was back there. Waddle had his man beat on the play. You can see the West Virginia defense. Hunt, Grant, Parker, Ellis, Pickett, Herring, and Warren. Ellis, if you'll remember from a week ago, as we see the secondary, Waters, Edwards, Orlando, and White. If you'll remember, Theron Ellis, Tom, banged up a little bit. Uh, a week ago, but he seems to be okay with that uh, sprained ankle. That's good news. Theron Ellis really had a heck of a game a few weeks ago before getting injured. This is Giles, the only setback in the Boston College offensive backfield, getting nowhere. Robert Pickett comes up to nail him first, and that West Virginia defense is really getting after it early. I realize there's only two plays, but they're very, very enthused, and it'll be a third down, and 
Nine yards to go for B.C. from the 21. Mike Power, a guy that they say has happy feet, maybe too happy back there. He gets back in the pocket, bounces around a lot, and runs away from his pocket, and the B.C. coaches want him to hang in there just a little bit more. Waddle and Flutie are split out. Waddle to the top of the screen. You can see him. You cannot see Darren Flutie. He's out of range. Frazier is now the only setback, and Power is straight back to throw. Mountaineers putting pressure on Power, and down he goes. Down he goes at the 15-yard line. Big number 94, Chris Parker comes in to make the quarterback sack. Well, a week ago, he had to sit on the sideline and watch West Virginia dismantle Cincinnati with that broken hand. You can see the cast on the left hand for Chris Parker. But today, he's back there, and he's playing very well. West Virginia came into this game knowing that they wanted to use pressure. See Chris Parker using that swim method to get by and get in there to put the sack on the Chris Power. So the Mountaineers, barring a turnover on this punt return, will have excellent field position. Rooney, the kicker for Boston College, it's off the side of his foot. Terry White just waves it, the fair catch sign, and watches it being down in Boston College territory at the BC 43-yard line. That's where the Mountaineers of West Virginia will take over. B deck number 52, was the man downing the football for Boston College. So things go on the Mountaineers' way early. Defense doesn't give up a one yard offensively, and the Mountaineers have it deep in Boston College territory at the 42, first and 10. And there's a panoramic view from behind the goalpost here at Alumni Field. Andre Johnson is in the backfield along with A.B. Brown, the starting running backs for West Virginia. And Johnson goes in motion. Of course, the quarterback is the freshman, Major Harris. Harris has a good block from the fullback. He's down to the 38 yard line, making the block that time. As Galvin made the tackle, making the block that time was Craig Taylor starting fullback, and Major Harris picks up about four on the play. We saw something interesting there from West Virginia. They come out and they use their top two tailbacks. They had Under Johnson out there and A.B. Brown. Rick Phillips, John Stroyas, Koken in the middle, Kovac and Smider making up that Mountaineer offensive line. Major Harris, Taylor, Johnson, Tally, Smith, and Keith Wynn at the tight end position. Second down at about six yards to go. The scoreboard says second attempt, but Harris picked up a good four yards. And this is under Johnson, and Johnson worms his way down to the 35-yard line before Romanowski makes the stop for the B.C. Eagles. He's one of the veterans here, left linebacker Bill Romanowski. You know, we hear a lot about Romanowski. He comes into this football game with 105 tackles through seven games, which is absolutely incredible. But Romanowski, we are told, has been favoring his shoulder a little bit ever since the pit game when he ran into that human bowling ball by the name of Craig Hayward. And so we'll watch out today and just see how effective Romanowski is. They're down and three for the West Virginia Mountaineers. They're at the Boston College 35, and Andre Johnson goes in motion. Major Harris straight back to throw. Now he'll step up. It's the quarterback draw, and Major's got the first down. That was a design play, and Harris is down at around the 26-yard line. Pearson had to come up and make the tackle for the Eagles of Boston College. The defensive end, Kevin Pearson, was chasing Major Harris. There's the Major, six foot, one inch tall, 215 pounds. We saw this play a week ago. It is the design quarterback option, as Tom said. A week ago, it worked for a touchdown. On this offensive possession, it works for West Virginia's first first down of the football game. First and 10 for the Mountaineers. They'll mark it at the Boston College 26 yard line. In motion now is Grannis Bell, number one. They give us to the tailback, Andre Johnson, and Johnson picks up three or four yards down near the 21-yard line before he is brought down by a host of Eagles from Boston College. And Mark Murphy was one of the main men on the scene, number 67, the left defensive tackle. So it'll be a gain, they say, down to the, what, 23-yard 20, uh, line. A gain of five on the play, rather, a gain of three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. We're at a very low angle here at Alumni Stadium. Sometimes it's hard to pick up exactly how many yards were gained on the play. Under Johnson now trying to pick up the first down. Under around left end. He's inside the 20 down at the 18 yard line. That's close to the first down. Knocked out of bounds over there by Vincent Munn, right cornerback number 28, Ed Duran. The, wi the uh, weak safety was also over there. Reminder this copyrighted broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by West Virginia University through its Mountaineer Sports Network solely for the entertainment of the viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or the use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Mountaineer Sports Network is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Mountaineer Sports Network. References to products by the announcers are paid commercial messages. It is third down at about three for the Mountaineers. Major Harris with Harvey Smith in motion across the middle, going for Smith and overthrew him. Oh, Harvey was cutting between two defenders. Ed Duran was back there. Also back there, David Johnson and Vincent Munn. Actually, three defenders on the play. Harris threw it over Harvey's head, so that'll bring up fourth down. Charlie Bowman will attempt a field goal, Tony, and 
They're going to mark this at the 25-yard line, angle left, so it's a 35-yard attempt. Well, Take a look at this play. Major Harris went into double coverage there, and luckily yeah. out through his man, Harvey Smith. That was a well-thrown ball, but uh, if you have to overthrow that one, it's a good thing to go up top. Bauman nails the 35-yard field goal, splits the upright. So with 10.58 to go in the first quarter, the Mountaineers of West Virginia University, three. The B.C. Eagles, nothing. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Tom Mees with Tony Caridi. And uh, Tony, uh, uh, the Mountaineers quickly on the board, 3-0. The offensive line has to have a lot of um, a lot of pep right now and confidence. And Charlie Bauman's got to be feeling good. Yeah, that is very important for West Virginia to take the ball for the first time in the game, move it down against Boston College, and come out of there with uh, three. You know, ideally they would like to have the touchdown. And they went with the, the pass on third down and three. You know, normally Don Nealon might have stuck it on the ground, but he's saying, hey, we can throw the football as well. And uh, that might stay in the back of B.C.'s mind on another third down and short later on in this football game. But nonetheless, West Virginia uh, plays uh, three minutes and two seconds of football, and they're on top 3 nothing. And Jack McNell saying, boy, I hope my offense can get in gear. You know, what he might be saying is, boy, I hope I win this game because next week he's got to play Tennessee right here. And then he goes to Notre Dame in November. That's not easy. And then he goes to the Dome in Syracuse to set the table for West Virginia's right. arrival there on the 21st. All right, Charlie Bauman, second kickoff of the football game. This time it's sort of a line driver, and Giles will wait to see if it goes out of bounds, and it does, so Bauman and the Mountaineers will have to do it all over again from their own 30-yard line. As the crowd's still late filing in here to Alumni Stadium, you know, this is one of those um, beautiful areas of the country where the tailgate party is almost more important than the game. It really is. It really is. People <laughs> enjoy their football. West Virginia and the Virginia Tech Hokies coming up on November the 7th and tickets for this interstate rivalry with the Tech team at Mountaineer Field on the 7th. Plenty of good seats for that game and the final home game against Rutgers on November the 14th. You can call the Mountaineer Ticket Office on Monday at 800-352-2512 or stop by any Magnet Bank ticket outlet. Should be a very good football game as the Hokies come in and then the Scarlet Knights the week after. And I will tell you, if you don't already have your tickets for the Rutgers Scarlet Knight game, don't take that team for granted. They are good. They have defeated Kentucky. They have defeated Duke. They have hand handsomely defeated Boston College. They are a legitimate bowl threat coming down the stretch. They've got a real good quarterback who continues to improve named Scott Ernie. Yep. All right, here's Bauman's re-kickoff. Giles will take it up at the five-yard line. So the penalty costs Bauman exactly five yards, and Giles over the 20, but not much more. He's down at the 22-yard line, where, again, the Mountaineer special teams are there, and one of the first on the scene is Turnbull. Ronaldo Turnbull will be seeing him at linebacker at the outside linebacker position later on this afternoon. He's starting to get more and more snaps for the Mountaineers. So Power comes on for his second offensive set against the Mountaineers. Mike Power, he is the veteran here. Last week against Rutgers, he was 15 of 28 for 262 yards and only one interception. First and ten from the 22-yard line. Power throwing out to his left to Waddle. Waddle has it. Can he get away from the defender? No, he cannot. Is making the nice play for the Mountaineers is Preston Waters. Waters just tackled him up high and wouldn't let him go. Preston is a true sophomore player that uh, really earned his wings last year against Pitt in a jam, and he has shown improvement for this West Virginia football team. And on that particular play, he showed he's got a little bit of strength as well because Waddle tried to break free, and he basically gave him a bulldog move and threw him down. In his second down, about five yards to go for B.C. That play gained up to the 28-yard line. This is Giles. We mentioned he has limited experience this year. Terry White was there to wrap him up just short of the 30-yard line. Boston College has to get to about the 31-and-a-half for a first down. Mountaineers are flying to the football as we take a look at West Virginia inside linebacker Donnell Warren. He receives the signals in from the side from defensive coordinator Dennis Brown, and then he goes over and gives those to the rest of the club. But West Virginia, early on time, seems to be flying to the football very well for Terry White to get up there and stop that ball carrier that quickly. They're moving. They're down at about two now for Boston College. Darren Flutie and Marcus Cherry both split wide to the right on third and two. Power now wants to run with it as he's pressured. He is going to be hemmed in, and down he will go. Darnell Warren has him. And also having a piece of the quarterback... Chris Herring, who raises his arms in triumph. Well, West Virginia came in saying, we are going to blitz this football team. Defensive coordinator Dennis Brown said, we know he wants to throw the football, so let's see what he can do with pressure in his face. And West Virginia coming away with two sacks on their first defensive positions, and so they're doing what they want to do early on. David Rooney now back to punt, and once again, Terry White is standing in single safety, this time at the West Virginia 40-yard line. 
A better punt from Rooney this time. Chases White back to the 35. Terry cuts it back toward the middle over the 40 to the 42-yard line. Number 92, Kelly, was there for the tackle for Boston College. That is Matt Kelly, a reserve linebacker out of New Canaan, Connecticut. Our score, 3-0, West Virginia. First and 10 for the West Virginia University Mountaineers on the 42-yard line. I make that the 41-yard line. Harvey Smith and John Talley are the split receivers for Major Harris. Harris pulls up, and he'll hit the fullback, Craig Taylor. One of the B.C. defenders falls down, and Taylor has plenty of yardage inside the B.C. 40 to the 37-yard line, where big Romanowski, Bill Romanowski, has to make the tackle. A good job of faking that time by Major Harris. That was a missed defensive assignment by Boston College. You'll see Craig Taylor here pop up behind Major Harris in the fullback position. Watch Craig hopping out there. No one goes over to cover him. 40 went at Major. He should have been dropping back with Craig Taylor. 21-yard gain. First down, West Virginia. What helped that play along is Vincent Munn, one of the cornerbacks, actually fell down, and Craig Taylor said, oh, my goodness, I got some room to roll. 21-yard reception. First and 10 Mountaineers, and this is Undra Johnson. Taylor is blocking for him. Undra is inside the 35. I tell you, he is running with a lot of power today. He's down at the 34-yard line. David Johnson, the strong safety, is going to remember Undra Johnson. This Mountaineer offensive line, Tom, and see if you agree with me, seems to be moving very well on their sweep plays. Earlier on last possession, we saw him go left. Watch this entire offensive line there, set up as a big blocking wall. Craig Taylor was over there. The tackle was out. Everyone was out pulling with the football, and they're moving <laughs> that football. Andre really gave it to him there. He buried that young man. It is second down and six as Calvin Phillips goes in motion. Major Harris, oh so mobile, going for Granis Bell! Touchdown, West Virginia! Major Harris to Granis Bell for the touchdown, a 34-yarder. And Bell was near the out-of-bounds strike, but he kept one foot in, and that's all that matters in college football. What do you say? We got a West Virginia fan here with a fist in the air, and Granis Bell could not be happier. A 34-yard touchdown, a beautifully thrown ball there, Tom, by Major Harris, and Granis is just basically on man-to-man -man coverage, beat his man out one-on-one. -on -one. He sure did, and he's celebrating on the sidelines. You can do that in college, friends. You can't do that in the pros, but you can do that in college. Charlie Bauman is in to attempt the extra point, and the sellout crowd here at Boston College is in shock. Because with 8.05 now to go in the first quarter, the Mountaineers are rolling. It's West Virginia 10 and Boston College nothing. You know, Tom, that was Granis Bell's first touchdown reception of the season. A week ago, we saw him run a nice end around for a big productive game, but he had not caught one for a TD yet this season. Here's another look at it. Major Harris continues to show he's getting confident there, throwing the football. Little swirl out of the pocket. Granis Bell wide open there. At one foot in for sure. That second foot was on the line, but as Tom said, this is college football, and all you have to do is have one in there. Vincent Munn was the man victimized on that pass play. You said that was uh, Granis Bell's first TD catch of the year. Yes, in fact, it's Granis Bell's third catch overall of the year. He uh, runs a lot of patterns. Very rarely is used, but uh, he was used that time. You know what? 10 to nothing, West Virginia says shades almost of Maryland coming out and scoring very quickly as we take another look at that TD throw by Major. You know, there were questions about Major Harris's throwing ability earlier on uh, this season when he was a little bit tentative. Well, that was a beautifully thrown strike right into the hands of Granis Bell. So the Mountaineers lead it 10 to nothing. You say the shades of Maryland. Yeah. Let's hope the final score is not shades. Well, you know, you come out there and you're very productive and you're on the road and things seem to be going your way, but we've got a ton of football to play. 8.05 to go here in the first quarter. You can see that one just took 52 seconds to put together. Three plays, 59 yards. The major to Granis for 34 yards in the TD. And still uh, thousands of fans filing in to Alumni Field. This is a late-arriving crowd. I mean, there, there are probably a lot of people who buy season tickets and never leave the trunk of their car. <laughs> Think about it. Charlie Bauman, maybe after the first quarter, they can't leave the trunk of their car. Bauman with a kickoff goes in and out of the end zone. It'll be first down in 10 for the BC Eagles at the 20-yard line. So three drives now for Boston College, and none of them have been beyond the 21-yard line, and that's important. 8.05 to go in the first quarter of play. Brad Hunt leads the defensive unit on. You said early, Tony, that the, the defensive unit of the Mountaineers is really flying to the ball, and I, I think that's an excellent description. They they realize what an important this game, what Im, what importance this game has going into Penn State for the rest of the season. Yeah, they took a little grief there as we see Jack McNell very disappointed as his club is down 10 zip. Power still there at quarterback. Camphouse is in reserve. Bronner, I should say Tower, and Frazier 
are the running backs in the I formation. And this is the give to the tailback, Frazier. And Frazier goes nowhere. Maybe a yard gain on the play. Mountaineers all over him. David Grant, middle guard, stuffing up the play. To finish the point I was making there before the play, West Virginia's defensive coaches gave their team a lot of grief over last week's performance against Cincinnati. Said they really emotionally were not into the football game. So they came out this week having to prove that. And so far, although as I continue to say it's early, they are playing very well. Gain of three, actually, on that play. Jim Turner is the only setback now for Boston College. He wears number 40. Fake to Turner. Power goes out to Darren Flutie. Flutie up to the 30-yard line, to the 31-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Boston College, and a mock cheer goes up as the Mountaineers' Willie Edwards comes over to force Darren Flutie out of bounds. Of course, the brother of the great Doug Flutie. Nice little delay there, play-action play that froze West Virginia's defense. Willie Edwards coming up from his cornerback position to put the stop on Flutie. Flutie, you know, of course, is, uh, is Doug's brother, but he had an outstanding high school career. Is one of the most highly recruited and uh, most highly respected athletes in high school ever to come out of central Massachusetts. He had over 1,600 yards rushing in his senior season there and led his club to two state championships. Frazier, the tailback, will get the handoff. Now can he find any running room? And the answer is no, as Bo Orlando nails Tim Frazier for a loss. Back at the 27-yard line, loss of four in the play. It'll be second and 14. Nice play, Bo. West Virginia's Dale Jackson also should be credited on this play because he came up in his linebacker position, was at the line of scrimmage, forcing the ball carrier to continue down the line of scrimmage, not allowing him to cut back in. In the same time, Bo Orlando was able to come up from his strong safety position. There's Dale forcing him to push out, and here comes Bo saying hello. Chunk Gregory is in the game now with a double wide receiver formation along with Marcus Cherry. They're both to the right for Boston College. Power, though, hands off, and he hands off to Tracy Giles, and Giles has got running room up near the 40-yard line, over the 40-yard line, and that's a first down. So a big running play. Willie Edwards again had to force out the ball carrier, but it's first and 10, Boston College. Looks as though they have Giles here, and they almost did have him. That was nose guard David Grant coming over there. Beautiful cutback move. He spun around there, and that whole West Virginia defense had already committed just a matter of an inch. Well, I, I called it a first down. I usually am wrong on those, and that's true. <laughs> it's third down and inches. I thought where he stepped out across the field, he had the first down, but it's third down and inches. Let's see what play the quarterback power calls. It's a toss to the tailback. That's a dangerous play. He may have gotten the first down, though. The tailback was Tim Frazier. And he may have fallen just over the first down stripe. Bo Orlando credited with the initial hit. Of course, uh, Boston College young men are in there saying it's no problem. It's a first down. Don't even measure it, but the officials, they may take another view of this. Jack Picknell says we should have it. The chain gang is out on the field, and they are very, very interestingly attired. They do have the first down. If you take a look at these chain men, <laughs> instead of the black and white, they've got red and white on. And Mr. Meese made the reference earlier on in the ball game that after today's game, they're going over to do some uh, candy selling at the hospitals around the Boston Candy stripers. Yeah. Vol volunteer work. Find them in the lobby. <laughs> okay, first and ten for Boston College at the 40-yard line. I feel like ordering an ice cream soda. So the Eagles now, after having trouble doing anything on their first two drives, have picked up two first downs against the Mountaineer defense here. And on first down, Powers back to throw. Pressured and dumps it in there, but it is incomplete. The intended receiver was Casparillo, the tight end, and Robert Pickett was in the area to make sure that Casparillo did not make the catch. Basically, it hit the turf and bounced into his hand. Defensive pressure by West Virginia, again, the reason for that play. They know that Powers, they, I said he had happy feet. He go, goes back there, watch him. He does not like to stay in the pocket long. Here he goes, little fake. He gets a little bit nervous, pressure's on. All of a sudden, he's running out of there, and he should be setting up to throw that football. It's much more difficult to throw on the run. Jerry and Flutie are split out wide to the right. Now Darren Flutie comes back in motion. Power again back to throw on second and ten. He's got plenty of time. Dumps it off to Flutie. Flutie's in West Virginia territory. Down at the 45-yard line, first and ten. And Herring had to bring him down from behind. So Power had plenty of time. That was the key on that play. And Boston College beginning to roll a little bit. Well, you knew it wouldn't be a piece of cake up here at Chestnut Hill. You just no, knew that. No, not at all. Especially when you're working against a team that likes to pass the football. Anytime they throw that football, you can get 10, 12 yards, and that's going to get to the first down. First and 10, Boston College at the Mountaineer 46-yard line. I'm Tom Meese with Tony Caridi. We're in the first quarter, 10-0 West Virginia. 
Hope you're enjoying it on the Mountaineer Sports Network. The give is to the tailback, and he is nailed. Carrying the football was Tim Frazier, and knocking him down after a very short span of time was Chris Herring. Chris Herring just is an absolutely sensational. I'd have to say, can, you, can we say he's the best sophomore linebacker in the country? I mean, he just goes out there week in, week out. He is not a liability whatsoever. Hits very hard, and this guy is going to be, I'd have to say, an All-American before his days are over at West Virginia. No gain on the play. It is second down and ten. Power to the tailback, running with the football, and again, not much success on the play for Boston College was Walsh. Or make that Giles, I'm sorry. It was Giles, Tracy Giles, making the tackle for West Virginia was Brad Hunt. Gain of only about uh, one yard on the play. Brad will step out of the West Virginia lineup now along with Chris Herring. West Virginia will put in an extra defensive back as Stacy Smith goes in in place of Chris Herring as Hunt comes to the sideline. Speech communications major is Brad Hunt. That's yep. what I got my degree in. Us guys have to stick together, you know. They're down. And Watch they're out. coming out there, and there goes Power. He is down. Robert Pickett on the blitz. He was there. Also, Dale Jackson was in there. And Mike Fox as well. A triumvirate really putting power down for the count. Well, they had BC where they wanted them. Third down and nine. They know the Eagles had a pass. That's playing into West Virginia's hand. They can play their defense. Here's a, a beautiful play. Robert Pickett coming in on a blitz from his linebacker position. And Mike Fox, you can just not stop that guy. Defensive tackle, six feet, seven inches tall. He basically does what he wants to. Watch out. Rooney back to punt again. A very bad punt off the side of his left foot. Out of bounds all the way up at the West Virginia 44-yard line. I mean, that was about a two-yard punt. And the score, West Virginia 10, Boston College nothing. Welcome back to Alumni Field. Alumni Stadium, to be correct. Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Tom Mees with Tony Caridi and the Mountaineers take over after a 12-yard punt, first and 10. And this is Major Harris to John Talley, but the pass is well short. Defending on the play for Boston College. Back there was number two, Steve Williams, but I think even uh, Major Harris would admit that was a poorly thrown football. Yeah, that was Major's fault all the way. John had his man beat and was down there waiting for the football. Just came in a little bit short. Calvin Phillips runs the next one in for West Virginia. I would think, Tom, it's important here for West Virginia to move this ball again against the Boston College defense. Give them another shot at their confidence. Tell them that we can move the ball against you this afternoon. That's what we plan on doing with 3.33 to go in the first quarter. You're up 10 nothing. You'd like to get a few more on the board. Second down at 10, and Major Harris barking out the signals and gives it to Andre Johnson. Johnson trying to get around some blocking gets over midfield into Boston College territory at the 48 yard line bringing him down was Dave Nugent nose guard also in on the play Steve Williams the left cornerback it is a pickup of about seven yards for under Johnson criminal justice major under Johnson hmm we're gonna see him on the people's court one day <laughs> He'll basically do what he wants to do when he gets out of school. I mean, he's that kind of a kid, very smart, very intelligent guy, and he's got a lot going for him besides his very good football skills. It is third down and three for the Mountaineers, and John Talley goes in motion right in front of our Mountaineer Sports Network broadcast location. Fumble under Johnson. Ball is loose. Boston College recovers the first break of the game at the BC 47-yard line as under Johnson got hit. On top of the football, Bill Thompson, right defensive end, number 46. And now the West Virginia defense will be sorely tested. Well, that was something West Virginia had been able to stay away from over the past two games, and that's turning the football over, and that can always decide a football game. Last year, West Virginia basically outplayed Boston College, but they committed four turnovers to BC's one, and they were able to win the football game. Right now, Boston College gets their best start position on an offensive drive because of the turnover. First and ten at the 47-yard line of BC as Power brings him out. Bronner, number 90, the big fullback, is in there to block for Giles. And there goes Giles. He's got a lot of room inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Chris Herring has to bring him down from behind along with Preston Waters. First and 10 for Boston County. And Darnell Warren is doing a little talking to the tight end Casparillo after the play. Yeah, they went face-to-face -face after that play, but really that was not where the ball was at. Take a look at Giles. He is a junior coming back from major reconstructive uh, surgery a year ago. Only had two carries coming into this football game. Forced, really, into playing here today because of the injuries to Bell and to Sanders. And he's doing, so far, a fairly good job. 14-yard pickup for Giles. First and 10, Boston College at the West Virginia 38-yard line. 
The give is to Bronner, the fullback, and he dives ahead for about a yard or two. David Grant wraps him up. That was an interesting formation. Four wide receivers going out, two on either side, and the handoff to Bronner, the fullback. There's the West Virginia sideline. Head coach Don Nealon looking things over along with Bob Simmons, defensive coordinator. Dennis Brown also out there as well. Second down and eight. Gain of two by Bronner. Cherry and Darren Flutie will go out wide to the right. Sort of a, almost a stacked formation as Flutie comes back in motion now. Power straight back to throw. He's got some time over the middle. Has Darren Flutie. Flutie just floating in the middle for the first down at the 22-yard line. Robert Pickett brings him down. But you know something? Flutie is having a big day. We have a Mountaineer down on the field at about the 22-yard line. Now getting up, that is Robert Pickett, momentarily stunned, lost his helmet. Now he appears to be okay. Well, Flutie came over. You'd see him coming over from the right side of the screen. He was in motion before the ball was snapped, basically just ran it right across the middle, inside and underneath the West Virginia linebackers. Pickett leaves, and big number 97, Lonnie Brockman, comes in to replace him in a linebacking spot. First and 10, BC Eagles at the West Virginia 22. Mountaineers lead at 10-0 with 1.29 to go in the first quarter. Great day for football, I'll tell you. Just, just ideal. Again, a double split formation for the BC Eagles on first down. Now we're handing off to Frazier. Frazier down to the 20-yard line inside of the 19. David Grant in there on the tackle. And Frazier is stopped after a gain of, oh, I would say about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. Stacy Smith brings in a defensive signal from the sideline. And Chris Herring will sit out an extra defensive back in this situation, Tony. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter play. I get the feeling after every play that these teams really do not like one another. We're seeing more and more pushing after every play. A lot of talking going on down yeah. there. Man in motion as Power gets sent to take the snap. And the give is to Frazier again, the tailback. Frazier trying to turn the end, and Preston Waters won't let him. He contains the play very well down at the 19-yard line. So it'll bring up a third down and six and a half or seven yards to go. Actually, they're going to place it now at the 18-yard line. Third down and six, let's call it. And here, here come the wide receivers with a play from Jack McNeil. If you like watching defensive football teams, take a look at this one, and you've got to love West Virginia. How many guys are after this ball carrier? By the time he's down on the ground, you've got nine Mountaineers either leaping or jumping over that pile. I mean, they're flying to the football. That's the end of the first quarter from beautiful Cheston Hill, Massachusetts. Our score, West Virginia 10, Boston College nothing. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium. And there is Don Nealon prowling the sidelines for West Virginia. And even though he got out to a quick 10-0 lead, he has to be concerned here, Tony, as the Eagles open up the second quarter, third and seven from the Mountaineer, or rather third and six from the Mountaineer 18. A stat to bring up. West Virginia's defense has not been scored on in the second quarter all season long. Are we in store for a turnover here or what? Or a missed field goal? In the second quarter. In the first quarter, you could believe that. But that, usually, you know, a team gets warmed up after the first quarter of play and, and puts something on the board sometime. But that's an outstanding statistic. Let's see if it holds up. Waddle and Flutie are the wide receivers both to the left. And Power is back to throw. He's looking for Flutie in the end zone. Touchdown, Boston College. But there's a penalty marker on the play. Hold everything. The flag is down, and it's against Boston College. Wipe it out. Some kind of a motion penalty against the Eagles. That was an absolutely beautiful catch by Darren Flutie. But it will not go because the penalty goes against the maroon-clad Eagles. Illegal procedure, and of course, <laughs> Brad Hunt is not going to have too much debate on this. Yeah, we'll take it. You know, I thought Bo Orlando did a nice job in covering Darren yeah. Flutie. When the ball is perfectly thrown and a guy makes a great catch, you can't stop it. We understand that Flutie needs only one catch now to tie for second place on the career receptions list here at Boston College. Not only does that five-yard penalty nullify Jack McNeil's touchdown, and he's quite upset about it, it brings up a third down and 11. So they need 11 yards just for the first down. 
Power again, straight back to throw. Here come the Mountaineers in the blitz, and Power gets away. He's got a lot of room. He's got the first down. He's inside the 10-yard line, down to the 8-yard line. Preston Waters was back there, Stacy Smith. When you blitz, that's the gamble you take. Yeah, he's a big play quarterback, and he's not scared to tuck it under when he can. Biggest play for Mike Power so far this afternoon. They needed that first down. And there he goes off to the races. I'll tell you, he had about another second and a half, 18-yard gain for Power. He had a second and a half in the pocket. He would have been down on his back. As it is, it's first and goal for the Boston College Eagles now at the West Virginia 7-yard line. Mountaineers will be happy to get out of this with only three. Cherry goes in motion. And the give is to Giles, and Giles inside the five. He is fighting, and he is down near the goal line. Is he in? No signal yet from the referee. It'll be second down and goal. It is very close to the goal line. Well, he had a hole here. There's no question about yeah. that. He had room to run. West Virginia's defense just made a, a beautiful effort coming in from the cornerbacks and the linebackers holding their ground and pushing him out. Willie Edwards had a hold for dear life there. It is second down and goal and really about a half yard away from the end zone. The Boston College Eagles trailing West Virginia 10 to nothing but knocking on the door. Power goes with a medium sized count. He'll take it himself and he's in. Mike Power on the quarterback sneak for the touchdown and Boston College pulls within 10 to 6. Proof positive that turnovers will kill you, and that's how Boston College got that football. They yep. make it a 10-6 game, and now they're going to be looking to come within three. Yeah, Andre Johnson was victimized by the fumble at his own 47-yard line, and a 47-yard drive is culminated with a Mike Power touchdown run of one yard. Now, in truth, it was a half yard, but it still counts the same. On now to attempt the extra point. Brian Lowe. Kick is plenty long enough, and it's good. So with 13.41 left in the first half of play, our score now reads West Virginia 10 and Boston College 7. Well, you see not a cloud in the sky, at least overhead of the stadium. A few wispy clouds off in the distance here at Alumni Stadium. There's construction going on all around this field which has been expanded in recent years and we understand a brand new ice hockey and college basketball building will be completed in about a year or so Tony right behind our broadcast position here in the in the uh, football stadium it's a wonderful concept that they have here the luxury boxes that you'll sit in to watch football games will look onto the football field of course then if you turn around 360 degrees and look out the other side you'll be watching basketball or hockey from the other side in the new arena just a beautiful idea that they've got here and while the uh, hockey and basketball arena is being built, of course, the B.C. hockey team, uh, always one of the top-rated teams in the country, has to play their home games at Boston University's uh, facility, which is interesting. 13.41 to go in the first half. And getting set to kick off now, the barefooted kicker for Boston College, Brian Lowe, who just kicked that extra point. John Talley, Pat Randolph, back to receive along with Undra Johnson. That scoring drive, eight plays, 53 yards as the ball was fumbled at the 47-yard line of Boston College and the Eagles took it in from there with 13.41 to go in the first half. We're set to play now. John Talley shading his eyes from the sun which is directly in his face could present a little bit of a problem. It is a high end over end kick. And Talley will take it at the one-yard line. Big John Talley got a little bit of a wall. Talley over the 20 to the 22-yard line. He is spilled rather hard by Anderson, June Anderson, sophomore fullback out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Andre Johnson has been the ball carrier for West Virginia so far, but 28 is in the ball game. That's A.B. Brown coming back from the hamstring injury that has slowed him down. We get an inside look at West Virginia's defensive huddle there. There's Dennis Brown, the Mountaineer defensive coordinator, going over defensive schemes with his club. Craig Taylor, the fullback, A.B. Brown, the tailback on first and ten for the Mountaineers at their own 21-yard line. Major Harris barks out the signals, and Harris gives to A.B. Brown. Brown picking his way over the 25 to the 26-yard line. John Galvin, right linebacker in that 52 defense, makes the stop. Gain of about five yards on the play as A.B. sort of picked his way on his tiptoes for a pretty good game. He's a skipper. 
He slides in there, skips up and down, and just a, a beautiful runner between the seams. Comes away with a six-yard gain on first down. West Virginia has the advantage now in a second and four as Jack McNeil still rubs his brow. Why does he always look like a worried man? Why do all coaches look like worried men? Never a time to smile. Granis Bell and Harvey Smith both out wide to the top of your screen now on second down and five. And this is A.B. Brown again. He'll cut it back inside. A.B.'s got the first down up to the 34 and a half yard line before he is brought down again by John Galvin. First and ten though for the Mountaineers. They'll mark it dead center on the 35 yard line. Coming into this game, Don Nealon said that A.B. Brown was at 80% health with that hamstring problem. Looks pretty good right here mm -hmm. as he works off the block from fullback Craig Taylor. Cuts it in there for West Virginia's first down. Granis Bell and Calvin Phillips. Bell to the top of the screen. Phillips to the bottom. The split receivers. Taylor. And there is A.B. Brown in the eye formation behind the quarterback Major Harris. First and ten for the Mountaineers. Give us to Craig Taylor. The fullback surprising the Boston College defense. Rubbling straight up the gut for seven big yards and Bill Romanowski brings him down. You know, that, that was a very good fake by Harris, and i got to believe some of those B.C. tacklers didn't know Taylor had the ball for some. Well, that's what those West Virginia sweeps do. They make that defense continue to think that they're going to be going running on the outside, either the right or left, and then you pop it, in the, uh, pop it into the fullback's gut, and he's got that hole up the middle. Second down and three. That's a big gobble on first down. Really gives Major Harris a free hand here on second down. Harris gives to A.B. Brown, hunting for the first down. I believe he's got it over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Helping to make the tackle, Garrick McPherson, left cornerback, number 48. And it's first and ten for the Mountaineers. And again, the faithful here at Chestnut Hill beginning to wonder what's going on. There is a, a significant West Virginia cheering section across the way from our location. I'd say, what, about a thousand or so people up in the Yeah, looks about it. Taylor and Brown again, the setbacks. John Talley is spread out wide to the left, along with Harvey Smith. Keith Wynn, of course, at the tight end, and this is Harris with a fake. Major's got to get away from some pressure. He won't do it. Down he goes. Back at his own 39-yard line. I think he ran into the coverage more than the fact that they tracked him down as Peter Gray credited with a tackle. Yep. He was looking to stick it outside there. If he would have turned that corner around the left side, he would have had just an open field ahead of him, but he just could not make that final turn to break himself loose. Right there. He went inside instead of going outside, and because of that, he got bottled up. Granis Bell replaces Tally, and it'll be second down and 17 yards to go now for the Mountaineers. First down, Bell, of course, catching that touchdown pass from Major Harris in the first quarter, 34-yarder. And the Mountaineers clinging now to a 10-7 lead. As A.B. Brown goes in motion, penalty flags all over the place. It could be delay of game on Harris. Yes, dead, it will. Dead ball foul. And that's what it is, delay of game. That's repeat the down. Well, we hear from the official for the first time today. Five-yard loss plus the loss by Harris on the previous play. It's going to be second down and 22. Don't forget, West Virginia and the Penn State Nittany Lions coming up next week from State College. We'll have that ball game for you on a delayed broadcast basis along the Mountaineer Sports Network. And we hope you watch the football contest. It'll Can't wait for one. that one, huh? It's going to be a biggie. Phillips and Granis Bell, the wide receivers, and A.B. Brown on motion. Second and 17, Harris up the middle. Major gets away for a moment, but he can only get back for a yard gain. Bringing him down from behind was Peter Gray. Harris gets back up. I thought he was at the 40-yard line, but he's back to the 39. So it'll be third down and 17. No gain on the play. And we have a whistle, and a timeout is called for by whom? The officials are signaling timeout for something. Well, they had a Boston College player that was injured, shaken up right? a little bit there. An injur injured player is Bill Thompson. He's now been taken off the field. And Boston College, they signaled a BC timeout, but the scoreboard still has three timeouts for Boston College. We'll find out about that later, hopefully. It is third down and 17, meanwhile, for the Mountaineers and A.V. Brown in motion. Harris got all sorts of time, finds Brown out of the backfield, but a great individual play by John Galvin. If Galvin doesn't make that tackle, Brown's got a first down. Yep. So the pass play only picks up three yards, and it'll be punting time. First time today for Lance Carrion, and he's going into a mild breeze. Well, I'll tell you what, that Galvin is tough. He does not get a lot of the publicity at Boston College that uh, he should because of Romanowski. He gets all of it. 
Carrion gets the punt away. It will be a short punt. Waddle back for Boston College just watches it bounce out of bounds at the 29-yard line. So neither side has had success punting into the wind. Our score, West Virginia 10, Boston College 7. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium, everyone. Tom Meese with Tony Caridi. First and 10 for Boston College on their own 29-yard line. The Eagles trailing are the Mountaineers by a score of 10 to 7. And Power straight back to throw on first down. Now he's under pressure. David Grant can't quite bring him down. But Lonnie Brockman does. Wraps him up around the ankles at the 33-yard line after a gain of four. Big Lonnie. Lonnie's a true sophomore out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Seeing more and more playing time. He's a good one. He's a good player, and the, the reason you're seeing him more and more today is because he's a good player when it comes to rushing, and that's what West Virginia is doing a lot of. David Grant uh, had a hand on Mike Power there initially, and Lonnie came over to finish him up. We've got another injured player down here well, for the Boston College Eagles. That's Jim Turner, the fullback. He's looking for his contact lens, Tony. That's what he's doing. <laughs> you know, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Whoa, did somebody find it? Look at this. Darnell Warren found it for him. Well, there you go. He owes Darnell one now, doesn't he? Rather than the saline solution, he's using the saliva solution to put that back in there. That's lovely. Let's move on. Nine minutes even left to come in the first half of play. When play resumes, it'll be marked second down and six for Boston College at their own 33. Some idiot just threw a loaded beer can at the Virginia bench. And fortunately, it hit the ground without hitting any personnel. And to their credit, some of the more well-thinking Boston College patrons are letting the fellow know that what he did is not appreciated. All right, back to football. Second down and six. And Power looks at the defense and wants a timeout. So we have an official timeout now with 8.42 to go in the first half as Mike Power goes over to talk to his head coach, Jack McNeil. There's West Virginia's Darnell Warren. The West Virginia Mountaineers have been playing defense well all season long. They've limited clubs uh, under 13 points a game so far this afternoon. Seven points for that West Virginia University defense. For all you do, this buzz for you. And really a defensive huddle over there now. There's Bo Orlando, Robert Pickett, Dale Jackson. All huddling with the defensive brain trust of the Mountaineers. First road game for West Virginia in quite a while. Yeah, we've been in Morgantown, or off, for a month. That's right. First road game since the Maryland game, back in College Park on the 19th of September. And, of course, the Mountaineers will remain on the road next week at Penn State, then come home for the final two home games against Virginia Tech on the 7th of November, and Rutgers on the 14th, and then a potentially huge matchup in the Carrier Dome on the 21st. Second down and six. We finally get back to play after a lost contact lens and a timeout. Power on the quick count. The toss is to Frazier. Frazier's got a lot of room. Look out. Bo Orlando is the last man that can get him, and Orlando stops a touchdown. Well, the BC Eagles are running with a vengeance here in the second quarter. Tim Frazier inside the 30-yard line, or rather inside the 40-yard line, to the 33. It'll be first and 10 there. We were told that Frazier, who's only a freshman, is a great runner. We're seeing more and more of that as he becomes more and more comfortable with his Boston College offense. He's off to the races for 38 yards. Bo Orlando making a touchdown-saving stop. First and 10, Boston College now in the West Virginia 33, and the Eagles have the momentum. Chris Herring, though, tries to switch some of that momentum as he nails Tracy Giles after a gain of around four yards. They'll mark it around the 29-yard line of West Virginia, second and six. So the Eagles, uh, to their credit, they come out here, maybe not totally emotionally in the game, Tony, but they get stunned to the tune of 10 nothing, and here they come. And we talked about uh, the injury problems in the offensive backfield for Boston College at the onset of the broadcast. So far, if you were looking at this game as a spectator, not knowing that, you'd say, what weakness is? Yeah. Because they are starting to move the ball from the tailback position. Isn't it funny? Last week, Boston College led 10 nothing early at Rutgers, lost the game 38-24. This time, they got to come back from 10 nothing, and then they're looking good. Mike Power trying to run out of the pocket now for a first down. He was chased out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. I don't believe it's enough for the first down. 
power that time. I'll tell you, he doesn't wait very long in the pocket. You're right. He's pretty impatient back there. He's at the 25. And you have to get... They're taking a while to mark this football. They're marking it now at the 24-yard line. So it's third down at about a yard for Boston College. Big play here for the Mountaineer defense. Could certainly use a big stick here. Turner is the fullback. Giles is the tailback. The give is to Giles. He's got the first down and plenty more. He's inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. That Eagle offensive line is really firing out. Lonnie Brockman made the tackle. You got Jeff Oliver, left tackle, Mike Bumpus, Bill Scavone, and Doug and David Waddell, and they are really firing out. Watch it here. They're dominating line of scrimmage. That wasn't true in the first couple of series of the game. First and 10, B.C. at the West Virginia 19-yard line. Double wide receiver formation to the left for Mike Power, the quarterback, but the give is to Frazier again. Frazier eludes Darnell Warren. David Grant finally knocks him out, but not until Frazier gets inside the 15-yard line. Almost to the 10. They're going to mark it around the 12-yard line. Matt Marlatt comes in see what he can do. Out of that holes. corner. Yeah. Good pursuit by West Virginia's Donnell Warren and by Chris Herring, the linebacker. But they're starting to run, and they seem to be pushing it, Tom, out of the outsides. Off to that right side is where they consistently run. First and ten. Another second down and three, I'm sorry, from the 12-yard line. Got to get to the nine for the first. Frazier gets away from one man, and he has the first down inside the ten at the seven-yard line. Mountaineers had him contained for a moment at around the 11-yard line, but Frazier has it first and goal now for Boston College. Stacy Smith among those in on the tackle is Don Nealon. Maybe seeing his 10-0 lead frittered away here. Chuck Gregory goes out split to the left. Split to the right side for the Boston College Eagles is Hilbert. Third string. Split in. He's now in motion is Hilbert, but the give is to Giles. Giles is brought down by Theron Ellis. For a loss of two back at the nine, and there's number 66 again. 66, the redshirted freshman, and 49, the true sophomore, Chris Herring. The Mountaineer linebackers coming over to make that stop. Jack McNell, Tony, using not one, not two, but three replacements at wide receiver on every down here. Second and goal from the eight. This time it is Flutie and Waddle going wide to the right. Power fumbles the snap. It's a loose football back at the 20. How about Power's it? Power's going for it. West Virginia has recovered. Power could not hang on. And the Mountaineers come up with a big, big Ellis. turnover. Number 66, Theron Ellis made the tackle on the last play. And that time he came up with a loose football. Very aggressive, very quick, great leaping ability. And Jack McNell says, oh, baby, I just lost my shot to take a lead. West Virginia has the lead and the football, 10-7. All right, following that fumble recovery by the Mountaineers of West Virginia, it's first and ten for the 19, and this is A.B. Brown. Brown's over the 20, Brown's over the 30, A.B. Brown, first and ten Mountaineers up at the 35-yard line, coming up to make the tackle for Boston College, number 46, Bill Thompson, who went off injured a few minutes ago, but now he's back. Good so, to see A.B. running that football like he is. This looked like a play that was stopped up, but A.B. Brown's got superior running ability. They've got him held here. No, they don't. Here he goes on to the races. <laughs> A.B. Brown, the transfer out of the University of Pittsburgh. Still plenty of time to go in the first half. 547 and counting. First and 10, Mountaineers at the 35. As Tally goes in motion, and the give is to the fullback, Craig Taylor, who hugs that ball to his belly. And Taylor's up to the 40-yard line. Kevin Pearson brings him down after a gain of around five yards. Craig Taylor, of course, getting the starting nod due to injury last week. Doc Basil out of the out for the season actually as a football career West Virginia has been uh, cut short because of that neck injury and so it's going to be Doc and Rico Tyler and Aaron Evans and so far Craig Taylor doing a good job second down and five is Granis Bell who caught a touchdown pass in the first quarter goes in motion and it's A.B. Brown again play the hot hand A.B. falls forward 
to the 43-yard line. It'll be short of the first down. John Galvin, the primary tackler for the Eagles of Boston College. He is going to be exactly one yard short mm -hmm. of that first down mark. Adrian Moss will come into tight end along with Tally. Granis Bell sits down. There's a look at the sellout crowd that was late arriving here, but now I think they're, they're all finally here. Yeah, beautiful crowd here and a beautiful day. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half in the wishbone formation for the Mountaineers. And this is Harris. Major Harris keeps it. Major's got a lot of room. Look out. He gets a block from Amy Brown. And Major Harris has a first and ten at the Boston College 24-yard line. Ed Duran made the stop, but the wishbone for the first time this week, Tony. Well, that's the thing what West Virginia wants to do with that wishbone. They don't want to be a wishbone team. They want to have it to throw you off balance. They want to use it once or twice a game. That comes away with a 32-yard play. The big thing on this I'm impressed with is A.B. Brown. He's out there like a, you know, like a, a wide receiver providing these blocks. Goes all the way down the field, pushing his man off there and did the job. And the fans from Morgantown and across the state of West Virginia that are here, you can hear them saying, let's go Mountaineers, as the fullback, Craig Taylor, plunges for a couple of yards. Romanowski and Galvin make the tackle. Craig will pick up yardage down to the 21-yard line. That's a gain of four yards. It'll be second down and six. That was a bigger play than I thought, and Don Nealon's got to like what he sees since that fumble recovery. Well, he likes what he sees, but he also wants to see that ball over the end zone. Yep. He'd like to see his club open it up. They're only on top by three after having led by ten. Time is not a factor, really. Still almost four minutes to go in the half, and West Virginia having all their time out, so give it to the running backs and let the offensive line do their job. A.B. Brown is down to the 16-yard line. That's a couple of yards away from the first down. It'll be third down and two. Remember now, the wind has picked up. So if the drive does stall, Bauman will still have a decent field goal staring him in the face along with the wind. It is third down now and two yards to go. The ball is officially marked at the 17-yard line of Boston College. Tally's in motion. And the give is to A.B. Brown. Can he pick up the first? A.B. Brown has it at the 15, down to the 14, the 13-yard line. First and 10, West Virginia. John Galvin, the tackle, but some good, hard running by A.B. Brown. That was a jersey twister for A.B. <laughs> there after that jersey. He got it all twisted up. That shoulder pad's sticking out there, but he doesn't care. He's got the first down. Somebody better put that thing back. Referee's going to call the penalty. Tuck your shirt in, A.B. First and ten for the Mountaineers in the Boston College 13. Major Harris has coolly led his club down the field since recovering that Boston College fumble as the Eagles were set to go in. And this is Craig Taylor. Taylor is wrapped up after a gain of a yard or two. Kevin Pearson was the first man to get there. Left defensive end, big number 80. And Garrick McPherson also on the tackle. Gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. 230. Left to go in the first half, and the clock running. Tally and Phillips go out wide to the left. Taylor and A.B. Brown are the setbacks. The give is to A.B. Brown again. Brown cuts in to the 10. Gain of only a yard. Bill Romanowski cuts him down. It'll be third down and seven with 2.05 left to go in the first half. Well, I know that Don Neal would like to run it right on in from here, but he may have no choice but to throw on this down. Just a good defensive job there by those BC linebackers. On the scoreboard it says here, they can still hear the signals. <laughs> Trying to get that crowd into that game so West Virginia can't get those signals off. They're down in seven. Major Harris, he's going to go to the end zone, and it's incomplete. Intended receiver was Harvey Smith. But knocking it away was Garrick McPherson in the end zone. Smith was behind his defender, but the ball never got to him. So Charlie Bauman will be in to, a try to attempt a field goal. It'll be a 27-yarder angled to the right. And remember, Bauman has the wind in his face. Ball is on the 17, but the 10 of the end zone make it a 27-yarder. Charlie already has a 35-yarder in the first quarter. Kick is plenty long enough. And the kick is good. So Bauman adds another three for the Mountaineers with 134 left in the first half. It's West Virginia 13 and Boston College 7. I tell you, that was a big kick, uh, Tony, because 
it wasn't as simple as it looked going into the wind. You're right. Uh, that wind's dancing around. Their flags are moving back and forth, coming down, starting to go up again. You know, that was an important offensive possession and important uh, points for West Virginia because they picked that ball up on the turnover. Now, Boston College was able to score on West Virginia's turnover, and it's very important for a team to match turnover for turnover. If you can do that, you're going to be in a football game, and right now is in it. West Virginia's in it, and they got the lead by 6 of 13 to 7 with 134 to go here in the first half of play. And Bauman and company get set to kick off. Mountaineers always seem to play well here at Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill. I recall a couple of years ago in the rain, West Virginia did not come out and play well offensively, but they had a great defensive effort and won the game 13-6, I believe. Right. Is here for that game. John Hollifield had the winning touchdown back That's in right. that one. Hollifield, there is, you got a brief glimpse of Jack McNell. He's got to feel like um, somebody owes him something. <laughs> by all rights, his team should be in the lead in this game, and they trail by six points. It's about time that kind of luck came West Virginia's way. Remember mm -hmm. the first day when we lost three in a row there, everything seemed to be going against us. 11 plays for the Mountaineers, 72 yards, and 430 is Charlie Bauman. Hits on the 27-yarder, and Charlie Bauman now gets set to hit on the kickoff. And Giles and Frazier are back for Boston College. They're standing at their own seven-yard line because, remember, Bauman's kick will go in the wind. And look at this. It's going to be real short. It is taken at the 25-yard line by Nardolio. Nardolio is a reserve quarterback for Boston College. That was Greg Nardolio from Randolph, New Jersey. Lonnie Brockman made the tackle, but VC's got great field position here. Up at the 28-yard line, it'll be first and 10. Could have been a lot worse. Mm -hmm. That ball came down at the 25-yard line. He only got a couple of yards on it, but uh, that wind took that one up there on Charlie Bauman. That wind has picked up significantly since the start of the football game. One and a half minutes to go. Now, Boston College, keep in mind, has only two timeouts. So they're going to need to a couple of, get a couple of big plays here. They're going to threaten. Power is going to be down for the sack back at the 17-yard line. First there to hit him for the Mountaineers was Theron Ellis. He is something else on the blitz, isn't he? Tremendous. David Grant there too, yeah. Let's take a look at Mike Powers' happy feet again. Does not like to hold that ball too long. He gets back there, he starts popping around. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Here they come. Yep. He's, he's killing himself. Power back to throw on second and 18. He has his man Casparillo, the tight end. He is upended by Lonnie Brockman. Also, Darnell Warren, who gets up lifting a little bit, but it'll be okay. Ball is up at the 26-yard line. And it'll bring up a third down at about 10. Actually, third down and 12, as Boston College has called a timeout. There's only 49 seconds left in the half. I don't know if it seems like this to you, but it seems like this to me. Casparillo, it seems like he's been at Boston College for as long as Jack Bicknell. I mean, yeah. <laughs> always remember number 85 every time West Virginia plays Boston College over the last several years. He's always being a factor in the football game. Well, you know, he gets here, then he, then he gets redshirt. He right. may, may have had an injury season in there. You know, play two games, get injured, that'll give you another year. There's <laughs> all sorts of ways you can do it. But all told, you can only play four years. See four years and five. Play four That's and right. you have five years to do it. Smith and Warren come in. Chris Herring comes out. For West Virginia. So at halftime, the Mountaineers appear that they will go in with a lead, barring a big, big play here by Boston College. Cast right. Excuse me, Tom, and that's the kind of stuff that Boston College can do to you, the big play. That's what you always have to worry about. You might be sacking them uh, with regularity, but, I mean, this power kid can go back there and just let one go. And with Flutie and with Waddle, they're tough. Waddle now has to race off the field. The Eagles had too many men on the field. Howard got plenty of time, goes, and has it intercepted by Terry White. White has got it at the 45-yard line. White is down to the 41-yard line with 38 seconds left in the first half. So the Mountaineers are in Boston College territory, and they still have all three timeouts remaining. Jack McNeil cannot believe it there. Cannot believe it. Terry White, super free safety for West Virginia on the deflection, takes the interception. West Virginia has got to get some points up here now. They have uh, the ball on the 41-yard line. They've got 38 seconds. Yeah, it's close, but they've also got a great kicker in Charlie Bauman who's got the ability. There's Terry White making some moves out there. Nine-yard return on that interception by Terry White off the tip. So it is first and ten Mountaineers in the 41-yard line. Let's see if West Virginia can add a few more points. Here's the reverse to John Talley. Smiter throws a nice block. Talley's got some running room. He's out of bounds. There's also a penalty flag on the play. 
Tally's out of the 33-yard line. Romanowski ran him out. Now the flag came from the defensive backfield. Looks as though it's going to go against West Virginia. The back judge may have seen some holding coming his way. They had Smider over there throwing an important block that sprung Tally free. I did not see him hold. I was watching the block set up. It could have been someone else. Well, it's officially called a clip, and this will really put a crimp in West Virginia's plans here because that is a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, and it goes back to the 45-yard line of West Virginia. The penalty is clipping on the offense. 15 yards, first down. And back at the West Virginia 45, the Mountaineers have to get to the Boston College 31 for a first down. Boston College has yet to be pinned. Well, no, Boston College had one costly penalty in this game that wiped out a touchdown pass. They had an illegal procedure. West Virginia's been penalized three times on the wishbone. The major Harris does the right thing. <laughs> he saw, he kept the ball, and he saw nowhere to go. He says, hey, I'm not going to get killed for this. Four seconds used. Yep. They were running to the short side, and you're right. Nothing to do. Get out of bounds. One of the Mountaineer coaches who were up in the press box barking down there information are now down on the sidelines as the team prepares to go in and reconnoiter at halftime. Second down and 25, but that's not the important stat. The important stat is 26 seconds left on the clock. After that interception by Terry White, choked off another Boston College drive. Here goes A.B. Brown. Brown's got a hole. A.B. Brown to the 40. A.B. to the 35, the 33 yard line. And a timeout is being called now with 15 seconds left to go in the first half. David Johnson may have saved the touchdown. Well, a big run by Brown, and now another first down, and you're definitely in Charlie Bauman's range. 17-yard run. They wasted a few seconds before they called that timeout, whether it was the clock man or whether it was West Virginia. That was uh, 20 seconds were on the clock when A.B. was officially down. Now you've got A.B. coming out and Undra coming in, along with Major Harris getting the play in. 15 seconds to go. Hopefully the clock won't hurt him here. Well, A.B. Brown seemed to be walking rather gingerly as he came out the field. He's not seeking out any medical attention. Let's hope he's okay for the second half. Fifteen seconds left in the first half, and Tally goes out wide to the right. West Virginia has it on the Boston College 32. I would say to have a, a really good shot, they need another first down here, another ten, ten yards or so. Here goes the fullback, and that's Craig Taylor inside the 30 at the 28. Immediately another timeout is called. 11 seconds left in the first half of play. First down as well for West Virginia, so that clock had to stop to move the chains. And Don Nealon calls another timeout anyway, so both teams now have one timeout left in this first half. Now the ball is on the 28. It would be a 45-yard field goal attempt at this time and it would be into the win I think Tony you got to run at least one more one more play and you got one more time out to use so why not that's what they're discussing there's Mike Timko Mike Wallace Dwight Wallace Doc Holliday how Don much, excuse me Tony how much input does, does Timko the backup quarterback have on a play like this oh he, he uh, he's very important for West Virginia uh, he's out there and he's taking a look at those defenses he's very very intelligent and he'll offer suggestions throughout the course of the game he's important okay first and ten Mountaineers but remember only 11 seconds left in the first half here comes Tally in motion Harvey Smith is split out wide to the right the give is to Unrich Johnson right up the middle. He'll gobble up some yardage, and he is down at the 23-yard line. Timeout now with five seconds, and here comes Charlie Bauman to attempt the field goal. The ball will be marked on the 23-yard line, so it'll be a 40-yard attempt. Bauman should get it off from around the 30. 40 yards against the wind. This would be an excellent effort if he could pull it off. It is a swirling wind. It really is. We've got two flags over at the end zone into where Charlie's going to kick this football. The American flag line limp. Boston College flag about 50, 60 feet from it is blowing up. Mm. So it's a weird swirl, swirling wind that we're seeing here. And Mike Timko, the holder, coming over to get some things straight on the sidelines. He wants to make sure everything's okay. Mountaineers using their last time out to stop it with five seconds left. And this will be an angle to the left. Bauman is two for two on the day. 35-yarder and a 27-yarder. 
Officially, this will be a 41-yard attempt. They're marking it down at the 31-yard line, and here we go. Timko calls the signals. The kick is off. It was almost blocked. The kick is long enough, and it's good. It just crept over the crossbar. There's a penalty flag down, however. That's Hold against, everything. That's against B.C. It's got to be against B.C. They could have been offside. The man that blew through and almost blocked it was there a little bit early. The referee is consulting with the West Virginia people. There are no time left on the, there's no time left on the clock. We won't go away until we're sure. Boston College is leaving the field. And the penalty was against B.C., so the field goal is good. A 41-yarder. Today's game is brought to you by your Mountaineer Chrysler Plymouth dealers. The competition knows it's the team to beat. By Budweiser. Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By U.S. Air, with flights to over 100 cities in North America. At U.S. Air, we welcome all of our passengers, one at a time. By Wendy's. The Mountaineers and Wendy's are a winning combination. By Walker Machinery and Beckwith Machinery, your Caterpillar dealers for West Virginia. By Flat Top Insurance Agency, America's energy agency. By Magnet Bank, the right bank in the right place at the right time. And welcome back to Alumni Stadium on the campus of Boston College here in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Still a picture postcard afternoon and things are looking bright for the West Virginia University Mountaineers. Tony Caridi is the captains meet at the center of the field and we take a look at the Wendy's halftime stats. West Virginia with a seven yard advantage when it comes to the passing game which is kind of surprising because it's the pass that BC lives by. Rushing yards, West Virginia with a decided advantage at 155 to 83. Total yards, the Mountaineers on top comfortably by over 70. Penalties, West Virginia's been hit for three for 25. BC just one for five but it was that one penalty that took away a touchdown from Boston College. They later came back to score it. Turnovers, one each. West Virginia and the Boston College Eagles. Is that correct? No, there was two turnovers yeah. against Boston College, and West Virginia scored on both. Average field position, you can see here's a big key. West Virginia starting from their own 41-yard line, while B.C. has been pushed back into their 28. That's very important. And in the first quarter, it was even more telling, because in the first quarter, Boston College was starting an average on their own 27-yard line, while West Virginia was starting at, at midfield at their own 48-yard line. So it is a game of field position and turnovers, and both those uh, statistics, those vital stats, have been in West Virginia's favor so far this afternoon. You recall the Mountaineers kicked off to start the ball game, and there is a penalty for offsides being called right now. The referee went out there and signaled an offsides call against Boston College, and they will kick off to start the second half, but not from the 35-yard line, the 30-yard line. Yeah. That as a result of that uh, field goal that West Virginia scored to end the first That's half right. of play, and so they're going to mark it off at five yards at that point. Offside was on David Johnson. You may recall in the last play of the first half. So West Virginia benefited from the field goal at the end of the first half and from the penalty against Boston College to start the second half. As John Talley, Pat Randolph, and Andre Johnson go back to receive the kickoff of the barefooter, number six, Brian Lowe. I would say that Lowe would be very cold today in his bare feet, except for one thing. He's in the sun and we are not. So it's a lot warmer about 15 feet away from our broadcast position than it is now. But well, this is great. We're situated right at the 45-yard line. And we are not nearly as high as we are in most stadiums around the country. So this is an excellent vantage point in some ways. Now, the wind is behind Boston College, and so much so that it blew the ball off the tee. West Virginia cheerleaders on hand here in New England. Undoubtedly had a nice weekend touring the city of Boston. And the surrounding areas. All right, here we go. The kick is a high end over ender to Talley at the four yard line. John Talley gets that big frame going. He bursts up the middle. He's over the 30 yard line, over the 35 yard line to the 36. First and 10, West Virginia. Again, excellent field position. John Talley gives it to him a 32 yard kickoff return up to the 36 yard line. 
Don Telly is top 10 in the nation when it comes to kickoff returns, averaging just a little bit over 23 yards per, per return, and that will help him out there as he goes up 32 yards on that kickoff return. The Mountaineers have good offensive field position for their first possession of the second half. Chuck Gregory, a reserve wide receiver, made the tackle on the kickoff return. First and 10 Mountaineers. Here goes A.B. Brown again. He'll turn around their left end or make that the right end. He's over the 40 to the 43-yard line. A.B. Brown has finally run out of bounds by defensive end Kevin Pearson. But again, on that play up to the 43, big chunk of yardage, make it seven yards gained, and it'll be second down and three. Nice job there by A.B. and a nice job by tackle Brian Smiter as A.B. closes in on 100 yards. Big Smides was out there just holding off that tackle from Boston College, and that allowed A.B. to turn that corner up. A.B. Brown's having a heck of a day, Tony. He's averaging seven yards a carry. This time, though, Brown gets a little rest as the fullback, Craig Taylor. Lugs the football. Kevin Pearson makes the tackle, but not before Taylor has him out near first down. Just short of midfield at the 47-yard line. Boy, a touchdown right at, the, right at the top here would really put a dent in Boston College's hopes. Craig Taylor's been very effective, hasn't he, Tom, so far today? He's yep. been used uh, very well, uh, offsetting the tailbacks from West Virginia. He's been coming up with some nice yardage. He certainly has. First and ten. From the 47, Harris faking the handoff. He wants to go long. He's got his man, and this is Wynn, the tight end. Keith Wynn out of bounds at the Boston College 10-yard line. Ed Duran was beaten cold. Boy, am I happy to see Keith Wynn catch that football. Last week, he caught a couple balls. He dropped a couple of balls that he shouldn't as Jack Becknell looks on. So on our way here to Boston on the flight, Keith Wynn gets on the airplane with a football tucked under his arm, would not <laughs> let go of the football. That was supposed to have him in his mind to hold on to that football, and he got that one up onto his fingertips, 42 yards, and West Virginia is doing some good moving on this Boston College team to start off this second half of play. They mark it at the 11, so West Virginia can get a first down without getting a touchdown. It is first and 10 from the 11. A.B. Brown skirts inside the 5-yard line. He's stacked up at the 4-yard line. There to meet him, number 5, Ed Duran. And also there for the Boston College Eagles, who is Garrick McPherson. A lot of jumping around at the line of scrimmage, but no flags that time. A.B. a little bit disappointed as he puts his fist down in the air. Uh, he wanted that touchdown. He thought he had it slid through at the five-yard line, but the B.C. linebacker stood him up at the five as we see the play develop from behind. West Virginia doing a little trapping out there. A.B. sees the hole, pulls up, thought he could slide through, but those D-backs came over and made the play. Craig Taylor has a touchdown for West Virginia. Right up the middle, Craig Taylor. A four-yard touchdown run, and the Mountaineers are on top big now at 26 or rather 22 to 7. Well, Tom, you said, wouldn't it be nice for West Virginia to come down on their first possession and score? Exactly what they did. And West Virginia has got to be seeing something on this Boston College defense as Don Nealon gives a handshake over to A.B. Brown and Craig Taylor because they have been using the fullback here today more than they have all season long. So there's got to be a weakness right in the middle of that B.C. defense. The extra point. Timko puts it down. Bauman puts it up, and the extra point is good. 13-38 left in the third quarter, and the Mountaineers are rolling. It's West Virginia 23, Boston College 7. Let's take another look at that touchdown by Craig Taylor. Reverse angle from the end zone as Craig Taylor pulls it in from four yards away. That was some superior blocking by West Virginia. Who do we have there? John Stroya and Kevin Koken. The guard in the center switched over and crossed over, and that gave the big hole for Taylor to put it right through the middle. All right, so Charlie Bauman is a busy man here today. He's kicked three field goals. He's kicked a couple of extra points, and now he'll kick off again. Will number eight, standing back to receive it for Boston College, will be the familiar duo, Tracy Giles, number 30, and Tim Frazier, number 21. And there is Charlie Bauman, and there is Frazier. And Tracy Giles for Boston College. They're standing right now at their own seven or eight yard line. Remember that Bauman will be kicking into the wind. And we're set to go. Looking good so far for the Mountaineers. Bauman just squibs it, it looks like, and it's caught at the 35 yard line by that reserve quarterback again, Nardolillo. And while he doesn't take it very far, he takes it nine yards. It's great field position at the 44-yard line. I would think that Bauman mishit that ball, I would think. That's the second one that uh, has kind of just gone on a low trajectory. West Virginia, five plays, 64 yards and 122. Craig Taylor with a touchdown from four away. Well, I tell you, you, you get a touchdown, you have a team down, you don't want to give them first and ten at their own 44-yard line. 
That's like having to drive only half the field. So for the first time today, Boston College has great, and I do mean great, field position to open a drive. Power takes too much time, and down he goes as David Grant got all on his loose. back. There's a fumble. Now, did it happen before he hit the ground or after it? That's the only question. Tom, I think they're going to say that the ball was fair. It'll be second down Boston College. Well, I thought they, I don't know who recovered that one. I'm not even sure what we're looking at. Are we looking at a dead ball situation or are we looking at a fumble that was recovered by BC? Let's see if we can pick it up here. Power gets pushed. That's a fumble. Ball's loose. That's a fumble all the way. So evidently one of the BC Eagles came up with the loose ball, although it looked like Harry oh. had it. But the officials down there and the West Virginia players did not offer any argument. As it is, it's still a great defensive play. A sack of seven yards after the fumble and the tackle at second and 17. And this is Frazier. He'll try to turn the right corner. He gets some yardage up near the 45-yard line. Chris Herring runs him out of bounds. But it'll still bring up a third and 10, 10 and a half yards for Boston College. If power cannot move Boston College here, at least in this possession or the next couple of possessions, we're going to see their reserve quarterback, who is very good, a guy by the name of Camphouse, a set-up quarterback who does not pitter-patter his feet and get nervous when the pressure comes. He'll just sit back there and throw. So we might see him before the day's over. Waddle and Darren Flutier split out wide and left. It's third down and ten for the Eagles of Boston College, trailing West Virginia 23-7. to Power... Gets it away, intended for Flutie, and overthrows Darren Flutie. Flutie was double-covered that time by Pickett and Bo Orlando, and it'll be a punting situation for the BC Eagles. Darren Flutie looking in on double-team coverage, really had no shot at the football. It was overthrown, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see Camphouse here in the next couple of series for Boston College. West Virginia kind of avoids a potential problem there, Tom, because they gave BC excellent field position, but the Eagles were not able to move the ball. David Rooney back to punt. He should get it off from about his 35-yard line, and Terry White is standing in single safety at the Mountaineer 10. Rooney, it's off the side of his foot again. It takes a Boston College bounce, though, and White does the smart thing, lets it bounce into the end zone for a touchback, where the Mountaineers will take it first and 10 on the 20-yard line with a score, West Virginia 23 and Boston College 7. So first and 10 for the Mountaineers in the 20, and you know something that's about the poorest field position the West Virginia's had today for a drive. At least uh, on a drive that they started via the kick and not the turnovers. Jack Picknell, he has the headset off. I don't know if that signifies anything, but he's going to go over and do some talking to some people. It doesn't get any easier for Boston College as Don Neal and the West Virginia people look on from their sideline. Next week, Tennessee comes in here. Major Harris handing off to A.B. Brown. A.B. over the 20 to the 25-yard line. It is Galvin again, I believe. John Galvin making the tackle. He is by far the leading tackler on the day for Boston College. David Johnson also in there. A.B. Brown chewing up five yards on first down. That's another stat, Tony. West Virginia have been very proficient on first down today. Yeah, you know, you take a look at A.B. Brown, what he's doing, 12 carries for 80 yards. And so... You know, he's over six yards per carry, and that's what you got to do. You get that, and you're very successful. We've got a nose guard jumping off there for Boston College. That'll be a five-yard penalty against the Eagles. Dave Nugent was the guilty party, and he knew it. And you know something? After the flag was thrown, center for the Mountaineers, Kevin Coca got up, shook his fist in the air, and yeah, I did it. I finally got one. And that's an easy five yards and a first down at the 30-yard line, first and ten for the Mountaineers. Just over the 30-yard line. 23-7. to 7. West Virginia on top and looking good in New England. Granis Bell in motion. Major Harris to A.B. Brown. He's got a hole. It closes up, but not before A.B. picks up about nine. McPherson was there to make the tackle. Left cornerback. Also there was Ed Duran, the weak safety. It is second down and one. And again, great performance on first down. So great to see A.B. Brown running the ball with no apparent problems with those hamstrings. He's so vital to this club. Hmm. Taylor and Brown again. Setbacks in the eye. And this is A.B. Brown. He trips. He actually looked like he tripped over his own feet. He'll lose a couple of yards back at the 38. And it'll be third down and about two yards to go. Peter Gray, credit for the tackle. 
Well, you, you get a feeling there's sort of a lull in this game now. West Virginia came out, asserted itself right away, getting that touchdown. Right now, uh, I believe the Mountaineers would be content just to do a lot of running and spend a lot of time. Although, goodness knows, a long, long way to go in this football game. Harris, he's got a lot of running room. Major Harris to the 45, the 46-yard line. He'll pick up the first down. John Galvin chased him out, but you see number nine there in the open flat. Forget it. Jack McNell probably wondering how in the world that happened. What a gentleman he is. Of all the people that we deal with, Tom, week in and week out during the college football season, he is so, so cordial, so sincere, and he really uh, is a tremendous man. And you know, he's, he's under a lot of pressure here. And in, in some ways, it was the worst thing that could happen to a head coach having a great player like Flutie. All the attention he got, the fans get spoiled, and uh, they, they've been criticizing this BC team. There goes Major Harris. Harris has another first down. He's inside the BC 40 to the 39-yard line. So the Major racks up another first down before Duran and Johnson bump him out. Major Harris, let's take a look at it. He's got his blockers out there. Potential pass. He says, no, I'll tuck it in. He's been doing more and more of that ever since the Cincinnati game. It's comfortable. As a matter of fact, he had so many blockers out in front of him that particular play, he couldn't decide which way to go, inside or outside. Major Harris coming into today's game averaged 3.7 yards every time he ran the ball. I would say his average goes up today. Here goes Craig Taylor. He bashes up the middle inside the 35-yard line. And Bill Romanowski is there to make the tackle. Good point you made a few minutes ago. I think it's true. The defensive line for Boston College seems to be wearing thin. Yeah. This is uh, typical West Virginia football. Smash mouth football. We're putting it on the ground. We're punching you. We're going to push you back, and we're going to take three. We're going to take four. We're going to punish you. They can hold on to the football, but be very successful doing just this. Nothing fancy, but it works. Harvey Smith out wide to the left. Bell goes in motion. Look out for Harvey. Second down and six. Harris, the pitch out to A.B. Brown. A.B.'s got some room. He gets by Galvin. A.B. Brown to the 25-yard line, where he's bumped out by Ed Duran, who's been a busy man today. But that's another West Virginia Mountaineer first down. The fans are not happy. The natives appear restless. There's a lot of them in here. Yep. And how can you be happy when you're the home team watching the visiting team do this? Quick little pitch to A.B. Brown. He's got that tremendous speed, ability to turn the corner, and on that play, he goes over the 100-yard mark, 102 yards for A.B. Brown and just 15 carries. His best day as a Mountaineer, looking good so far. Major Harris giving it to the up man in the formation, and that again is the fullback, Craig Taylor, making the tackle is John Galvin, and there's an injured player, that is Galvin, he is slow to get up on the AstroTurf, and if Boston College loses him, that'll be a big, big loss in that yep. defensive scheme. They cannot afford to lose him. As I said earlier on in the first half, he is a great linebacker, but he is overshadowed because of Bill Romanowski, who's the All-American and gets all the All-American uh, credit and all the publicity, but Galvin's a tremendous player. Seems as though he landed on that shoulder the wrong way as he put the wraps around Craig Taylor. 9.40 to go in the third quarter. The clock running. Galvin will be out for at least one play as he steps to the sideline. Trying to replace him will be Ron Perryman, number 32. Second and five. What do you say we see a pass? Might be a nice way to mix things up. Tally's in motion. They may go to him in the flat. But no, it's A.B. Brown. Hey, why not? It's working, isn't it? A.B. Brown almost has the yardage for the first down. He'll be about a yard short. He's at the 16-yard line. And got to get to near the 15 for the first down. Matt Kelly, linebacker replacement number 92, brings him down. It'll be third down. Scoreboard says two. I'll call it one and a half for the first down. Sometimes the scoreboard here appears to be in a different time zone. This time, Taylor is alone, and we have a whistle by the referee. And a timeout is called by Major Harris and the Mountaineers. So we have 8.49 to go. In the third quarter, it's 23-7, to 7, West Virginia on top. Welcome back to uh, Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Mass. And you know, the West Virginia offensive line has just been doing a great job off the ball most all afternoon long. So guys, for all you do, moving that football for the Mountaineers, this bud's for you. Let me clarify things right now for A.B. Brown. This is not his best day as a Mountaineer. He had 128 yards rushing in a game earlier this season. 
that was rather 168 yards in the game earlier this season. He is now, though, again, over the 100-yard mark. My apologies to A.B. I know how important those stats are to the running backs. Here goes A.B. Brown again. A.B. inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. And Kevin Pearson makes the tackle. It'll be first and goal for the Mountaineers on the Boston College 9. Seven-yard game. Strength against strength. West Virginia's offensive line against B.C.'s defensive line. A.B. Brown had the hole. Put him out there, and he's going to get you the yardage day in, day out. Good to see him healthy. Mountaineers now have 246 yards rushing as a team as we look again at A.B. Brown. First and goal from the nine. The give to A.B. Brown. Taylor, another good block, but this time Brown is caught up with and thrown for a one-yard loss back at the 10. Bill Thompson makes the stop for Boston College. So it'll be second and goal from the 10. It would be very nice for West Virginia to get a touchdown here, Tony, but, you know, really three points would still hurt Boston College quite a bit. Just get some sort of points on a drive this long. A drive that started all the way back at the 20-yard line. A few wispy clouds now starting to come into the New England area, but still a beautiful day. As Harris on the reverse to Talley. John Talley may go in. Touchdown, West Virginia! You could tell that was going to be a touchdown, Tony, from 10 yards out because of Tally's long strides and the great blocking in front of him. That was the same play we saw at the end of the first half in which there was a clipping penalty called against West Virginia. They ran it to the short side of the field, but as you said, with John Tally's physical ability, he's the true weapon on this West Virginia team. He came over in motion, took that reverse, and he just bullied it right in there for the score as West Virginia goes up. 29 to 7 and Bauman looks to make it 30 to 7 and Bauman nails the extra point up and through again with 743 to go here in the third quarter and this game is approaching route proportions as the Mountaineer faithful across the field stand and cheer the Mountaineers with their most impressive performance I would say Tony when you consider the caliber of the opposition I mean this is a Boston College team that beat TCU and Temple and gave Southern Cal all they can handle. Here's another look at that beautiful play. West Virginia had it blocked absolutely perfectly, and John Telly, I'm happy to see him get in there for six because he's a player that West Virginia needs to use constantly, and they are starting to use him more and more as this offense starts to click. John Telly starts to click, and they are just very, very two crucial factors that they need to exploit. Look at those strides coming right at you. I mean, that's tough. I mean, when he had the ball at the 10, when he got around to the 10, I started to call touchdown. Yep. Was, nobody could touch him there. You know, people criticize Don Nealon for using John Talley on kickoff returns during the first couple games of the season. Why are you doing that? He doesn't. He can't run fast. Well, he takes strides that uh, are like a giraffe, and uh, <laughs> before you know it, he takes two to compare to one of those little guys back there. They need four of those, and John Talley's got a 23-yard return uh, average into this football game, in the top ten of the nation. What more could you want? Well, Charlie Bauman, a busy man this afternoon. My point about Boston College is they played Southern Cal tough on the road. They lost by only 10 to Penn State. They beat Pittsburgh, and here is West Virginia climbing all over their case. Bauman's kickoff eventually bumps out of bounds, and uh, it'll be a five-yard penalty. You know something? That ball almost stayed in long enough for the yeah. Mountaineers to go and recover it. That would have been something. Look at the scoring drive, the longest one of the day, 80 yards. 13 plays and 4 minutes and 58 seconds, so they took a nice portion of the clock off, drove the ball down, and John Telly culminates it with a 10-yard touchdown run. And West Virginia Mountaineers have now racked up 256 yards rushing on the day. So they're doing the job the infantry is, and Major Harris, that makes it so easy when he wants to pass. He has a, the big touchdown pass, of course, in the first quarter to Granis Bell. Another big pass to Keith Wynn, the tight end. That set up a a field goal so the Mountaineers are just doing everything right including racking up the first down two to one margin Bauman again high end over end kick again it's headed toward the left hatch mark where it's brought in there by Boston College number 31 St. Pierre Duke St. Pierre he is a junior fullback from Danvers Massachusetts and he does a nice job over the 35 yard line up to the 38 New quarterback, Tom. Camphouse is coming in there. 
Ronaldo Turnbull made the tackle on that kick return. This camp house is supposed to be much more relaxed than David Power, much more calm. He had an outstanding high school career at Moeller High School in Ohio. Mark Camphouse, number 12, and the fans start to whoop it up to pitch out to Giles. Giles tries to turn the right end, nothing doing. Darnell Warren is there to wrap him up. And it may be for a loss of a half yard. It'll be second down and at least 10 yards to go for Boston College. They mark it right on the 40 yard. I don't know how they could have given the running back any gain on that. Second down and for the record, nine and a half, I guess. Waddle is out there along with Cherry. They're split to the left. Boston College got to do a lot of passing right now. You would think anyway. Camphouse straight back to throw. He's going to the sideline. He's got an open man, Cherry, but he overthrows him. And even if Cherry caught that, he would have been out of bounds. It'll be third down and ten. Mo Orlando was on the coverage. Mo's played a strong game. In fact, the entire secondary has played well today. Well, with an effort like this, it makes you wonder. You don't like to let your mind wander, but wonder about next week at Penn State, doesn't it? I'll be the coach. <laughs> One game at a time, Mays. One right. game at a time. <laughs> They're down to nine. Camp House. He, he executes the fakes, but everybody knows he's going to throw, including Waddle, who makes the catch for a first down at the West Virginia 45. Terry White is there for the tackle, but the reception by Tom Waddle, who had eight catches last week against Rutgers and has not been a factor so far today until then. Flutie gets a lot of the attention as the receiver, as the receiver, premier receiver on this BC team, but actually it's Waddle who's the better receiver. He's the human highlight film, they call him at Boston College. First and ten at the West Virginia 45. Gasparello, the big tight end, goes in motion. Camp House getting some time, throws, and has his man at the West Virginia 34-yard line. That is Tom Waddle again. Chris Herring is coming off the field. He's waving as if he's injured, and they'll have to replace him. Willie Edwards made the tackle. Stacy Smith will come in as an extra defensive back, and Chris Herring is favoring his left arm. As I said, Camp House is a setup thrower. He'll take his time back in that pocket. Very strong arm, and he's put together two nice completions as Boston College moves in inside West Virginia territory. Shoulder seems to be the problem, Tom, on Chris Herring. Yeah, they're working on his left shoulder. Could be a separation. Let's, let's wait and see. He might come back in this game. Back to business. First and ten, Boston College, and they're threatening now at the Mountaineer 39-yard line as Camp House has his team moving. And this time he'll give it to the running back, the tailback Giles, to try and mix things up a bit. But Giles is met by David Grant and pounded down to the AstroTurf at about the 31-yard line. Robert Pickett also there. As Tracy Giles, who had only carried the ball a couple of times coming into today, has played well, I think, for BC. Yeah, they had a duel. You see his right knee if you take a look at that brace right there. He had major reconstructive on it last year. And he's a junior, and so he's got to be running just a little bit gingerly on that thing because he has not had that much uh, use on it in game situations this season. Only had two carries coming into this game. Second down about eight for the B.C. Eagles in Camp House with the running fake, and now he's going to have to run with it. Pickett tried to grab him down with one arm. Couldn't quite get it. Is that Brad Hunt who finally rolled him down? It is. Haven't called Brad's name too much today. They must be double-teaming him on that defensive line. Short of the first down, the tackle's made at the 26. Camp House is not the runner that Power is. He's the guy that likes to go back there, drop and set and throw. He does not want to get up in there and make himself a runner as Jack Bicknell looks on a little bit of disappointment, I'm sure, as this club is down by 23 with 5.15 and counting in the third quarter. And third and two for the Boston College Eagles at the West Virginia 26-yard line. That's Cherry in motion. Camp House has some room to run, but he'll throw for, for Waddle, and Waddle has it at the 10. And Waddle is nailed. Oh, my goodness. Did Preston Waters give him a shot or what? At the 10-yard line, it is amazing if Waddle gets up. And he's not getting up right now. It was a clean shot by Preston Waters as Waddle got away from Orlando. And Preston 
Waters nailed Tom Waddle. Well, any time you're a receiver and you get held up by the defensive backs and you're vulnerable, I mean, you've got three guys, you've just caught a pass in their territory, they're fired up, they not only want to make you tack, make you go down on the ground with a tackle, they want to re remind you for the next time not to catch the football. And Preston Waters, as you said, clean shot, but he absolutely levels Waddle on this play. You see Camp House, very strong arm, nicely thrown ball. There's Willie Edwards. He stood up, and there's the shot. Teddy Kester also over there, 53 for West Virginia, putting the hit on. Also in the defensive backfield now, David Lockwood is put in. You got Lockwood, White, Bo Orlando, Willie Edwards back there. Teddy Kester, as, as you mentioned, is in there at linebacker. It is first and 10 for Boston College from the 10, or just outside the 10 yard line. The give is to. Number 21, this is Frazier. Frazier turns the corner. Touchdown, Boston College. So Tim Frazier turns the right corner, the right end on West Virginia. And it's into the end zone. And you got to say this for Boston College, they are more inspired with Camp House at quarterback than they were with Power. Oh, there's no doubt about that. He got in there and started moving that team immediately. The question is, though, what's the B.C. defense going to do? Because West Virginia just pushed them and pushed them and pushed them on their first possession here in the half. They're going to go for two. Well, they're trailing now 30 to 13. I guess they figure with a two-point conversion, they're within 16 points of a victory. So, a big two-point conversion. Darren Flutie, the man in motion. Camp House looking that way into the end zone. It is incomplete. Receivers slipped down. Boston College wants a penalty, but they will not get it. Waddle says he was interfered with. They will not get it. 434 left in the third quarter. It's still West Virginia 30, Boston College 13. Here's another look at that two point conversion, Tony. Crowd is looking for interference. Uh, from that angle, you really cannot pick up any interference, not to say there wasn't. Let's see if we get a better shot here. He's going after Waddle. Double team coverage by West Virginia. They're in on the man. Boy, that looks like interference. There's no doubt about that. They got him early. Well, like you said earlier in this telecast, it's about time that some of the breaks started going West Virginia's way because I'm sure the Mountaineer players could give the Eagle fans all they want about unfortunate calls and unfortunate happenstances. Well, Jack McNell's team now trails by 17, but hey, still a lot of time left. 434 to go in the third quarter. And this is another look at the touchdown run by Frazier. I'll tell you, this kid's got some speed. I mean, he gets out in the open flat. He turns that corner. I don't care who's going to play him on defense. It's Pittsburgh Steelers, the Miami Dolphins. Watch this kid go. He's got tremendous speed, and he's only a freshman. He just beat Bo around the corner there. Like he wasn't even there, and Bo Orlando is not a slow individual. Oh, he's got 4-3, four, 4-4 four, four speed in the 40. So Brian Lowe will tee the football up for the Eagles of Boston College who have to be playing with renewed life now and this next series for West Virginia will be a big one. And there's a look at the Eagles scoring drive. 61 yards and only nine plays. Mark Kampaus came in to get the job done at quarterback for Jack McNell's team and they took three minutes and nine seconds to do it. But is the margin too much for Boston College to overcome? One would certainly think, but one never knows. The kickoff high end over end. It'll be taken by Talley at the five. John's got a convoy, but cuts it back to the middle of the field. He'll try and outrun one of the defenders. Talley's in the open field. Talley's over the 30 to the 32-yard line. Talley was one-on-one -on -one that time against Gregory for Boston College, number 19, Chuck Gregory. And he decided to take him on rather than follow the wall at the left side. John Talley's got tremendous strength. He picked off that one BC defender there and just kind of threw him away. Brian Williams credited with the tackle. We have a little conference now going on in the West Virginia huddle with the officials and Pat Randolph. Well, there was an extracurricular activity going on there. You got three Eagles pushing Tally over on the near side, and then there was a skirmish afterwards, some pushing and shoving. I have not seen a penalty flag come no. down yet. They're working on the spot right now. Don Nealon is in the middle of that. Well, there will be a penalty against the Mountaineers as the BC Eagle is... I guess, I guess he's <laughs> he's pushing the sideline marker down the field, huh? Or the sideline camera truck. That's what he's doing. Anyway, it's no laughing matter for the Mountaineers. Is from the spot of the foul, it'll be first and ten. Yes, but now it's back at the 16-yard line. 
I'm sorry, first and 25. That's right, it was a dead ball foul. So it's first and 25. The ball is at the 16-yard line. Got to get up to the 41 for a first down. And Craig Taylor, the fullback, is stuffed. And Boston College has a lot of energy going on their side now. Let's see how their defensive line reacts. Peter Gray made the tackle that time. Not a time to get fancy and put the ball up here and risk an interception, I would think. Tally and Calvin Phillips go out to the right. Undra Johnson and Taylor are your setbacks. Major Harris going to pass. He's got Calvin Phillips open. He's got a first down, I believe. First and 10, West Virginia. Calvin Phillips as he used number 43, Brian Williams. He had Williams turned around 10 ways from Sunday, and he made the catch. Delightfully thrown ball there by Major Harris. Reverse angle shot coming at you. Calvin Phillips coming over from the near side formation. Major just kind of dropped back, had his sights on him, threw a nice ball to him. Calvin Phillips brought it in right at that sideline marker. Actually, if the truth be known, that was an end zone shot. <laughs> what did I say, sideline? No, you said reverse angle. That's what the graphic said, but that was an end zone shot. <laughs> it's from the other end zone. <laughs> I think that's great. Craig Taylor with it on first down up to the 46-yard line. Romanowski and John Galvin made the tackle. Scoreboard operator must not think the BC fans are too smart because all afternoon he's been saying constant noise hurts the other team's offense. I don't know if they need that in West Virginia. I think they know that full well. I'll tell you, it is usually a quiet crowd here at Boston College, and uh, they've had good reason to be quiet today. Their team really has not been in the game except for spurts, and here comes Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson inside the 45 to the 44-yard line, and West Virginia has its equilibrium back now as Andre Johnson is ran out by Romanowski and also by Brian Williams. You know, the way that Major Harris has mixed up the pass with the run has been beautiful today. Watch Harvey Smith here, 88, split end for West Virginia. He does the blocking, pushing off that man, allowing under to turn that ball up. Otherwise, it's just a four or five yard gain. This time around, it's a first down for West Virginia and under Johnson. Johnson lines up in the slot and now goes in motion. Major Harris has got Taylor blocking for him around the left end. Harris slipping down. And he is piled on there by the Boston College defense. No penalty flag. Ed Duran was the first one there. I was a little bit afraid for Major there. The way he went down, I was watching those knees, but fortunately, he's okay. Bell replaces John Talley. Watch the way Major Harris goes down here. Whoa. But he's okay. Second down and 12. Loss of two on that carry. Harris got a lot of time to throw. Major's got to do some running now. Throws on the run. Has his man. And dropping the football was Harvey Smith. I guess Harvey never had control of that. He made a great effort for it on the run. Covering on that play was Vincent Munn. I thought they might have called that a catch and a fumble, but fortunately for West Virginia, they say... Harvey never had it. There's Don Nealon as he's in the shade right now. Notice how they always put the visitors on the cold side of the field, you know that? They're down in 12. Bell and Harvey Smith out wide to the right. Harris under a rush and down he goes. First man there was the nose tackle, Dave Nugent. And he had a lot of help from his friends, too. So Lance Carrion, for only the second time today, will have to punt. Well, they were in a full-scale blitz. They knew West Virginia had a pass. It was third down and 12, and they got their man. Major had nowhere to go quick. So Lance Carrion back to punt, and he gets a good end over Ender. Let's see if it takes a West Virginia bounce. It does not. And downing the ball for the... Mountaineers is Wheeler. E.J. Wheeler downs the football to be first and 10 Boston College on their own 25. Well, let's see if the Eagles behind quarterback Mark Camphouse mount a drive similar to the one they had a few minutes ago. If they do, it's going to be a heck of a fourth quarter. 
Very entertaining game here in Chestnut Hill, Mass. Hope you're enjoying it. Tom Mees with Tony Caridi will be with you from Penn State next week. But now back to matters at hand here in Chestnut Hill. Camphouse straight back to pass on first down. He's going long for Cherry. And Cherry, it's incomplete. Preston Waters got a hand on it, I yep. believe. Man-to-man -man coverage. Preston Waters was tested. Preston Waters passed the test with flying colors. He had an outstretched hand there and knocked that ball away. Tended over there. And it was a nicely thrown ball. This camp house has come in. He hasn't thrown a bad one yet. Marcus Cherry was open, and Preston Waters uh, gave him just enough room and then got back in time. Take a look at Preston. Here he goes on the leap. Right hand is out. Deflects that football. Could have been caught very easily if Preston didn't touch it. Preston Waters coming back, feeling his left wrist, I believe. May have banged it up as he hit the turf after the play, but he's hanging in there. It'll be second down and ten. Camp House again looking to the left sideline, and he has a receiver. Oh, oh, my, what a hit. What a hit on number 86, Ray Hilbert, and he lives to tell about it, too. Not only that, he is about a half yard away from that first down. Let's take a look at the play. Robert Pickett was out for West Virginia, linebacker covering a wide out. And hello and welcome to Division I football, Preston Waters making the stop they're going to be about a half a football short of the first down marker in fact the officials may be ready to measure this or they, or no they're not going to measure okay it's third down half a yard ball is right square on the 35 yard line Flutie goes out to the right the backs are in the eye formation for Boston College 30 to 13 Mountaineers still with a comfortable lead and Camp House is going to pass and he'll be sacked and there's a fumble there's a fumble the Mountaineers have recovered now. What are they going to say? Did the ground cause the fumble? I think they're going to say it was down, Tom. The referee threw his ball marker down there. Willie Edwards made the sack. Whatever, Boston College will have to turn it over. But credit Willie Edwards for the big play. Boy, was that dumb. Third down and a half of football, and you try to pass it when you're down 30 to 13. Bo Orlando and Willie Edwards. It may be dumb, but West Virginia will take it. Let me oh, question. sure, I'm not saying that. <laughs> it worked right into West Virginia's hand, but you got to wonder about that play call. I had to do, do a double take. I didn't understand uh, when the ball was not handed off. Uh-oh, Terry White fumbles the punt. And Boston College is recovered. Got a penalty flag down. You got a couple flags down. Dead ball fouls, it looks like. Boston College has the ball. And it, well, let's, let's wait to see. They may be calling penalties both ways here. You know, you know what that fumble does by Terry White? No one will question Jack McNell now about throwing the ball on third yep. inches. That's a moot point all of a sudden. Terry never had the handle on that. Dead ball foul, personal foul, West Virginia. It is first and ten for Boston College. So they are not offsetting penalties. So a fumbled punt and a personal foul. And all of a sudden, this game has taken a strange twist. And it'll be Boston College football, first and ten on the West Virginia 12. Well, it was fourth down a second ago. And now it's first and ten from the 12. 42 seconds left in the third quarter. This could be quite a fourth quarter, Tony. I'm not looking for an interesting fourth quarter, Tom. Uh, I'm hoping for a dull one myself. Camp House to Giles. Giles has hit at the 10 and falls forward to about the six-yard line. Good, and good running by Giles. David Grant was the man who finally brought him down. A lot of hard hitting and hard feelings out on the AstroTurf now. Robert Pickett is shaking up on that play, and Lonnie Brockman will go in for him. It'll be second down. The ball is on the eight-yard line. Make that the seven-yard line. Second down at about five yards to go. This is Bronner, the fullback. He's got the first down. He doesn't have the touchdown. It'll be first and goal from the one. And that is the end of the third quarter. Our score, West Virginia 30, Boston College 30.
Well, there's our score as we look at the score. West Virginia hanging on 30 to 13. But as we open the fourth and final quarter, Tony, it'll be first and goal for Boston College from the West Virginia one. 17 point West Virginia lead. It could very quickly become a 10 point West Virginia lead because Boston College has that football inside the one yard line. I'll tell you what, turnovers and penalties, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure it out. That's the key to football games. Turnovers kill West Virginia, penalties kill West Virginia. And turnovers, so let's be fair, turnovers killed Boston College sure. in the first half. So, door swings both ways. Is I'm really impressed by the leadership of Mark Camphouse and the way this club from Boston College responds when he's in the game. Turner is the fullback. Giles is the tailback, and Camphouse makes the carry. Now, is he over the goal line? I don't believe so. We would have seen a signal by now. It'll be second down and goal. And West Virginia loves it because the clock keeps ticking and ticking and ticking, and every second is so precious. The Mountaineers are still in control here, leading by 17. And should Boston College score, it would still be a double-digit lead. So things are still in control. Tony? Third quarter statistics provided by Wendy's Restaurants. Passing yards, West Virginia 123 to 101. They're up by 22. Rushing yards, the Mountaineers dominating 257 to 103. In total yards, they've got the big edge at 380 to 204. Stacy Smith injured on that quarterback keeper. John Spiker, Greg Ott, Mountaineer trainers out on the field walking Stacy off. So it'll be second down and goal. The ball is placed on the one yard line. Wouldn't a turnover be nice now? A fumble of some sort. Here we go. Camp House leads him out. Turner. And number 35 for the BC Eagles. Sanders now in there at running back. Turner and Sanders. The give is the Turner. And Turner is close, but not in, I don't believe. Nope. The BC players think he's in. If you don't get that touchdown signal from the official... The second that he's hit, you're not going to get it because these are surges we're talking about. Let's watch it from the line of scrimmage coming at you. He's hit. Wow, that is very, very, very close. The ball, actually the nose of the football is only a couple of inches from the goal line. It'll be third down and goal. And Boston College is going to be forced to use a timeout. So both teams, and this could become critical should Boston College score here, both teams have two timeouts remaining. Well, that football, I'm telling you, if West Virginia executes the goal line stand here, the defense really, really ought to be had a, handed a big round of applause because all Camp House has to do, Tony, from where I see the football, is lean forward. Well, tickets are available for the interstate rivalry with Virginia Tech at Mountaineer Field on November 7th. Plenty of good seats for that game and the final home game against Rutgers on November 14th. Call the Mountaineer ticket office on Monday at 1-800-352-2512 or stop by any Magnet Bank ticket office. All right, Camp House has him third and goal. I wouldn't be surprised if he just didn't take a quarterback sneak here. And no! Does. There's a fumble on the snap. A fumble on the snap. Who's got it? West Virginia has got it. West Virginia recovers the football. Camp House fumbled the snap. Willie Edwards, I believe, has been given credit for the fumble. Oh, my goodness. This is unbelievable. Jack McNell has his head down. You talk about a slap in your face. You've got first and goal. That football is about two stripes away. You know who Big Al is talking to? The center, Scavoni. What happened? That's Camp House never had the football. There it is. You see it down low, right at the line of scrimmage. So it's first and ten, West Virginia, on about their own one-inch line. And Major Harris does get the snap, and he falls forward for two or three yards. Really, nobody tackled him. He just rested on a pile of players. But he gets some room at about the two or three yard line. Turnover so far, a pair each. Take another look at that one, Tom. You said it. Quarterback Campos never had the football. He's looking for it. West Virginia was on him. 
And Willie Edwards coming over from his position, cornerback position, to pick that ball up. Second and seven from the three. A.B. Brown wedges forward for maybe a yard gain. And I'm, I'm quite sure that dodging a bullet like that, that West Virginia, sure, they want to pick up the first down, but the main thing is they keep Boston College off the scoreboard. Even a punt now would use up a lot more time. Yeah, you know, Tom, we've got uh, under 13 minutes to go now in the football game. B.C. started off the fourth quarter with that ball about a yard, uh, half a yard away. They could have scored there. They would have had time, plenty of time to come back. But now they've wasted two and a half minutes, and they didn't come away with any points. Third down and six. Major Harris gives to A.B. Brown, and A.B. will be cut down for a loss. Back at the two-yard line, Dave Nugent makes the tackle. So Lance Carrion will come on and punt, and he will not have very much room to punt the football. He will be right at the back of the end zone when he gets the snap. If nothing else, West Virginia bought a lot of time that time with a fumble recovery. Yep. And Waddle, Tom Waddle, is back in single safety for Boston College at midfield. Carrion will have a slight win behind him at the high snap, but Lance gets it off. He thought about taking the safety, I'll bet, but he gets it off. And West Virginia watches it roll out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Our score, West Virginia 30, Boston College 13. West Virginia 39. This is a key possession for Boston College. Let's see how that uh, goal line stand affected them. Turner and Frazier are the running backs. Darren Flutie goes in motion, and Camp House will give off to the tailback. This is Frazier. He's got some running room. He's inside the 30 to the 29. Willie Edwards bumps him out of bounds. Actually, they're going to say he's at the 27. It'll be first and 10 B.C. Well, I guess they haven't thrown in the towel. This kid's a lightning quick player. Yep. True freshman, or is a freshman player for Boston College. He gets down that outside, you're in trouble. Chris Herring re-enters the football game. That's a good sign. He had his left shoulder worked on by the training staff. And Herring, number 49, is back in there on defense for the Mountaineers. Frazier goes in motion this time, and Camp House will throw on first and ten. Frazier in the flat. Edwards has him sized up and has him out of bounds. Back at the 32-yard line. That'll be a loss of about three or four yards in the play. Willie Edwards was not fooled. 11.58 to go. Mountaineers will be at Penn State next Saturday afternoon. We'll have it for you on a delayed basis on the Mountaineer Sports Network. Boston College will entertain the Volunteers of Tennessee. Tennessee under the shadow of more probation this week. NCAA investigating. Second down and 15. Loss of five on that first down play as Camp House goes back. He's got plenty of time. He's going for Flutie. And Preston Waters had him played beautifully. And they're going to call him for interference. Well, friends, I find that hard to believe, frankly. I thought Preston Waters had him played beautifully. He turned into the football. I'd like to see that play again. I'm sure we will. Remember, in college football, it is not the spot of the infraction. It's from the line of scrimmage. You make the call. Well, that was weak. I don't understand what was going on. What, that was weak. What possible pass interference could be called? You got Waddle coming one way. He tripped over his own feet. Waters was, he never touched Flutie, and, and they call pass interference. I, I don't understand that. Maybe, uh, maybe a make good for one missed on a two-point conversion. Who knows? First and ten, at any rate, for Boston College on the West Virginia 16, so the Eagles are threatening. Don Nealon can't understand it either, I'll bet. Turner is the lone setback. Camp House has two wide receivers to the left, and knocking that pass down is Theron Ellis. There's that vertical leap we talk about with him. He's got over a 40-inch vertical leap. He went straight up and swatted it down. Big number 66, who's coming on with every game, Tony, and to think that he's got three-plus years still left to go in Morgantown, has got to make Don Nealon feel good. Comes at an outside linebacker position. He's a leaper, sees that ball getting ready to be thrown. Up we go into the wild blue yonder. Waddle goes to the left, and Darren Flutie is a wing back to the right, and he'll go in motion behind Camp House at second down and 10 from the 16. Camp House has to scramble, and he loses the football. Who's got it? West Virginia, Terry White. Terry White. Now, wait a minute. They're going to say it was a forward pass. They're going to say an incomplete forward pass. 
Well, that's another hard call to understand. I'd like to take another look at that. That's not a good call. He pumped fake with the football. He wasn't going to throw it. He was starting to move downfield. Don Nealon has got the headset on one to hear about this one. Yeah, that's a real pass. Well, another good point is he was beyond the line of scrimmage, according to one of the coaches down there. I don't know about that. But I do know that that was not a forward pass. He was just trying to fake some people out, and he got away with one. Boy, Mountaineers are working against more than 11 players out there. They're down in 10 now from the 16. Scoreboard is in another time zone. They still say it's second down. It's third and 16. The third down in 10, and Camp House is under a rush, and he gets it away. It is complete to Waddle, who's got some running room, and he is blasted at the 17-yard line by Terry White. Well, Camp House was nailed, and Waddle was nailed, and the bottom line is it's 4th and 10, or 4th and 11. I think West Virginia's angry now on defense. Oh, I think so. <laughs> Look a couple at of calls go against them. Oh, Camp House. Camp House got bought. Yep. Now there bought. comes Waddle. Boston College going for the field goal here, Tony. Brian Lowe has it lined up from 30, uh, from 35 yards out. It is straight on. Kick is up. It's definitely long enough, and the kick is good. So Boston College tacks on three points. And now trail the Mountaineers by 14. Our score, West Virginia 30, Boston College 16. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Boston College did put some points on the board, Tony, but the good point for West Virginia is the fact that it was only a field goal and it would still take with only 10.40 left in the game. One touchdown, or rather two touchdowns and a two-point conversion to beat West Virginia, even if the Mountaineers didn't score any more points today. So they're still in control. I don't want to belabor the point, but the uh, officials really kicked two calls. I just cannot see any way from any different angle that those two plays... Uh, were not incorrect calls. Interference against uh, Preston Waters of West Virginia. We saw that on the videotape, Tom. There was absolutely no way. And then you see Camp House running out there. He's got the ball up at his ear. He did not try to throw the football. He fumbles at West Virginia, recovers. They give it back over to Boston College and say it was a pass. Those are just two big kicks by the officials. West Virginia has been penalized now seven times for 72 yards. BC only twice for 10 yards. Squib kick now from the foot of Brian Lowell. And Andre Johnson, rather Pat Randolph gets it. Randolph over the 30, Pat Randolph over the 35 to the 37-yard line. So good field position for the Mountaineers again. First and seven, and uh, rather first and ten from the 37-yard line. Paul DiGeronimo, a senior defensive end from Fitchburg, Massachusetts, makes the stop. And let's see now what Major Harrison Company can put on the board in way of a drive, if nothing else, to use up some more clock at 30 to 16 the Mountaineer advantage. Got Andre Johnson in there this series. Yep, Andre's in there with Craig Taylor, John Talley in motion. Give us the Johnson. Johnson over the 40 to the 41-yard line where Dave Nugent brings him down, but it's a gain of three or four yards on the play. Actually, they'll mark it at the 40-yard line. But for sure, Andre had another yard, but for the record, it'll be on the 40. It'll be second down and eight yards to go, gain of two. Granis Bell caught a touchdown pass in the first quarter. Is out wide to the right. Average field position there. You see it. Boston College has really evened it up thanks to some great field position here in the second half. Harris. And a nice catch by Harvey Smith. That was a bullet. Smith had to jump for it. And he got as a first down at the Boston College 44. That's a great athletic play. Tremendous catch by Harvey, the fifth-year player there for West Virginia. Co-captain the Mountaineer offense. That comes with under 10 minutes to go, now 9.54 on a frozen clock. Major really whips that football. And Harvey Smith goes up, puts his hands on it, and comes straight down. That's a beautiful reception. First and 10 for the Mountaineers on the Boston College 44. You would have to think any kind of score by West Virginia now would just put this game out of reach. Granis Bell in motion. And this is Craig Taylor, the fullback, and Taylor's inside the 40, picks his way to the 37-yard line. As John Galvin makes the tackle, Mountaineers have to get to the 34-yard line for a first down, so they're three yards short. 
Don Nealon looks on. He has to be happy with his quarterback, Major Harris. He's 6 of 10 this afternoon for 139 yards and one touchdown back to Granis Bell. A week ago, he was 9 of 14 for 120. So slowly but surely, Major Harris is getting his completion rate up and uh, really doing a good job moving that West Virginia offense. Tally's in motion on second down and four. Harris gives it to Undra Johnson. Johnson spins. The flag is down in the backfield. Undra is cut down at the 35-yard line. Taylor today at fullback. 12 rushes for 53 yards. Let's wait and see the penalty. John Stroya hanging around to hear the official word. Also, Keith Wynn. The official is consulting with Wynn, although the, the flag was thrown in the West Virginia offensive backfield. It is a penalty against West Virginia. The official, we cannot see his exact signal. Let's listen. Referee is Joe Shirk. His microphone is not working. Joe and the boys have been having a rough afternoon. <laughs> you remember Illegal back that two-point conversion? On the offense. Illegal Five shift. Yards. Remember that two-point conversion yeah. could have been pass interference against West Virginia. They blew that. Blew two on the last possession. Tally in motion. Second down to nine after the penalty. Major Harris. He's going long. He's got Harvey Smith. And Smith is interfered with. It'll be first and ten for West Virginia. As a Boston College defender was all over the back of Harvey Smith. And with good reason, Vincent Munn would have been beaten for a touchdown. Harvey Smith took it in the face mask there and got dragged down very hard. He's up and he's walking around. He's all right. Pass interference against Boston College. They don't mark it down where the infraction occurred, remember. It's from the line from the uh, line of scrimmage. But a beautiful pass play. Major Harris, he is really putting the ball on the money today. And had Smith not been hogtied, he would have made that catch. So it'll be a first down for the Mountaineers. Three penalties now against BC for 25 yards, and they'll mark the ball down at the 27 yard line. Grannis Bell brings into play from Don Nealon. Not much doubt, is there? Nope. Calvin Phillips to the right. Bell's in a slot. And now Grannis comes in motion. The give is to Undra Johnson, and Undra's got some running room. Look out. Johnson inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. He's brought down finally by Ed Duran. That is close to another West Virginia first down, and they're going to wave it on, I believe, as they move the chains. First and 10 for the Mountaineers. 8.31 left to go in this football game. It's been a good one for Don Nealon. And the troops, although as there are almost every week, there have been a lot of anxious moments. Very interesting football game. Craig Taylor. Mountaineers content to really just run the clock out, Tony. They'll give it to Taylor and to Andre Johnson, and really, uh, I don't think they'll pass unless they have to. You know, the nice thing about this afternoon's football game, besides the score right now, is the fact that West Virginia has been able to use A.B. Brown and under Johnson, and they did not have to use Eugene Napoleon. Therefore, Eugene, who's been on the sideline all game, has another week to rest that ankle. Mm -hmm. And they will need Eugene Napoleon next week, I think it's fair to say, against Penn State. Gain of five on the last play. And this is Craig Taylor running for another West Virginia touchdown. But we have a flag in the play. Yep. Flag thrown down at the 11-yard line. That's going to go against West Virginia on a hold. Well, Boston College had one uh, touchdown brought back because of an illegal procedure penalty earlier in the afternoon. And a holding call will take another touchdown run away from Craig Taylor, and he's got to be upset about that. He well, walked in there, didn't he? He sure did. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's like, pardon me, I have this football. Will you get out of my way? On the offense. You see that in practice we'll when they walk down. through the plays. This is where you're supposed to go. That's right. how that works in practice. Of course, one of the reasons he may have walked is that somebody was holding somebody else. So the ball is back at the 22-yard line. It'll be second down and 15. Mountaineers have to get down to the seven-yard line of Boston College for the first down. 
Major Harris will throw this time, looking all the way for Grannis Bell, who's wide open at the 10 to the 6-yard line. That's a Mountaineer first down. It'll be first and goal. Nobody covered Grannis Bell. He snuck back there and hold up, hung, hung on. They were looking at Harvey Smith. Harvey had gone into the end zone on his pattern, and Grannis just pulled back about five yards, and he was wide open, as Tom said. A little dipsy doodle for Grannis, who's already got one touchdown this afternoon on a 34-yard reception, that in the first half. David Johnson finally made the tackle, but not before Bell had a first and goal for the Mountaineers at the six-yard line. A lot of the crowd beginning to file out now here at Alumni Stadium. Craig Taylor, they tried to get him the touchdown again. Craig is cut down at the three-yard line. And Bill Romanowski is credited with the tackle. David Grant kills me. He's on the sideline. He's waving over to the West Virginia fans. He wants them to, to stand up and start cheering. <laughs> David, you're in the shade there in the sun. They're enjoying life right now. <laughs> I'm sure they'll stand up in a minute. Second down and goal from the three. Harris to Undra Johnson. Taylor gives him a good block, and Johnson, however, doesn't get in as he's cut down at the two. Gain of only a yard on the play. Garrett McPherson chokes off the touchdown attempt. And it will be third down and goal. Adrian Moss will come in. And Calvin Phillips leaves. And Jack McNell must ponder Tennessee coming in here next week. He also must be pondering at Notre Dame and at Syracuse. Mm. Third down and goal. Harris with a pitch out to John Talley. Touchdown, West Virginia. Three-yard touchdown run by John Talley, which means he, he had to take a step or two when he was in the end zone. That's two touchdowns for West Virginia's John Talley. His first two touchdowns of the season, West Virginia goes up by 20 points with six minutes and 14 seconds to go. The extra point is upcoming, and West Virginia is on their way to lifting their record over the 500 mark to 4-3 and three on the football season. And that man, Jack McNell, will see his club, Boston College, drop to 4-4 four and four on the season. Charlie Bauman, extra point is up, and as always is the case today, it's good. So our score with 6.14 to go, West Virginia 37, Boston College 16. The crowd starting to file out of Alumni Stadium now in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. It's only a matter of count. The Mountaineers are going to win this one. They lead it 37 to 16. And Tony, you made an observation when Boston College came out for the opening of the game, when they first came out of the locker room. And yeah, it rang true. I just didn't think they were fired up. I mean, they were just jogging onto the field, and this was after their pregame warm-ups, and it just seemed to me that a college football team oftentimes wins on their emotion rather than their physical ability, and when you come out on that football field and when you're at home, you've really got to be hard-charged and make something happen. And then a couple minutes later, West Virginia came out, and they had the blood in their eyes, and they were ready to go, jumping on top of each other, and that was kind of the, the problem that BC has coming into this game. We were talking to uh, their play-by-play -play announcer earlier, and he said, emotionally we just haven't been in it the last two weeks well they'd better button down their chin straps because they're going to have another tough test here at this stadium next week against Tennessee here's the kickoff fumbled by Giles at the one he has to go back and get it and he's got some room now he's over the 25 Giles is met head on by Charlie Bauman now friends Bauman really took a lick but I got to give him a gold star for the tackle on that play he may have saved the touchdown Giles had nowhere to go, and yet he brought it up there right from the one-yard line. Nine plays on West Virginia's last scoring drive, covering 62 yards, four minutes and 26 seconds. That's important as you kill that clock. John Telly, his second touchdown, a two-yard run. You know what Bauman's going to go tell all the linebackers? Don't ever criticize us kickers again. We can play football. You know, that's the second week in a row that he's made a tackle. Remember against Cincinnati, he came across and made a heck of a stop. He was a linebacker in high school. All right, no, nothing to do for Camp House now, but throw. You sort of have to feel for the young man. He's going to be pressured like this on every down. Darnell Warren can't quite get him. Camp House with a good run over midfield. He's got the first down to the West Virginia 47-yard line. The market just inside the 47. Camp House straight back to throw, seeing nobody open. Took off before he was sacked. Chris Herring finally ran him out. <clears throat> It'll be first and ten for the Eagles. What the West Virginia defensive coaches want here is their defense to keep playing. They don't want them to quit. They were very unhappy that Cincinnati was able to score 14 late points last week when the game was pretty much already decided. Gregory and Cherry are out wide to the right this time. 
Camp House under pressure has to run again. There he goes. He's going to be doing a lot of this, and right now it's pretty successful. He has another Boston College first down at the 29-yard line. Terry White and Theron Ellis were there to upend him. And with each first down, the clock stops, but the margin is just too much now with 5.47 left to go in the football game. Mountaineers up by 21 points. Let's see which play Camp House runs this time. It's been all number 12 with it. He'll fade back again. This time you see somebody open. It's Darren Flutie. He's got it. He caught that ball at the 18 and actually lost yardage back to the 19. That's close to a first down, though. As he goes out of bounds, it is first and 10 again for Boston College. Mountaineers seem intent on just giving him everything but the touchdown right now. Laying back, bend, bend but don't break. And Flutie does well to keep his balance. Sherry and Gregory go out wide to the left this time. Ball's all the way down to the West Virginia 19-yard line. Hasn't taken too long to get down there either. The give on the running play, a little change of pace here to Frazier. He's caught after a gain of about three-yard lines. David Grant wraps him up. BC with only two timeouts left. And it'll be second down and seven. We haven't called his name a whole lot as far as tackles go today, but I bet you when this film is watched tomorrow and broken down, David Grant will score very, very high as far as grading out on this film because he has been all over the football field setting things up for the linebackers. Turner and Tracy Giles, the running backs, and they'll both go out as receivers now. Camp House, he's pressured again. He won't, yes, he'll get away. I, I was going to say he won't get it off this time. But he'll get away and he'll squeeze on down to the 14-yard line, short of the first down. And we'd like to remind you that our executive producer of the Mountaineer Sports Network is Mike Parsons. Our producer-director is Nick Smith. Associate producer in charge of graphics is Alan Hercules and all the other fine people that help bring you the Mountaineers of West Virginia University on the Mountaineer Sports Network. Third down and four yards to go. And we'll be with you again next week from Happy Valley as the Mountaineers take on the Nittany Lions of Penn State. The defending national champions. Camp House rolling left. Penalty flag down. He has a touchdown to Waddle but hold everything. There's a penalty flag down and the Boston College players don't seem too sure about this touchdown themselves. Darren Flutie for the record caught the pass in the end zone. But it will be, I believe, against Boston College as they're walking back. Hold. 70. Hold against number 70. Well, you don't see that. Jeff Oliver, the left tackle. You don't see the, uh, the violator identified in college football, usually. That's right there. Yep, there it is. We had Theron Ellis. Theron Ellis thrown down. So that is the second touchdown today called back by a penalty against Boston College. It's been that kind of day for Jack McNell's team. Any negatives today for West Virginia, Tony, that you can see? Not off the top. I think the West Virginia defense did a good job throughout the afternoon. The West Virginia offense, uh, when they had to, moved the football and capitalized on turnovers. And that's what uh, Don Nealon really was after, just capitalizing on turnovers and, and not turning the ball over. Camp House under tremendous pressure, and it's intercepted by Lockwood. David Lockwood at the 5. Lockwood is up to the 20. He's got some running room. Lockwood to the 30, and Camp House comes over to make the tackle. Camp House, who was sacked on that play as soon as he let the ball go, got up from the turf and made the tackle on David Lockwood. So an excellent effort by the Boston College Reserve quarterback, but that really puts a lid on it. And Camp House goes to the sidelines disappointed. And there's a penalty flag in the middle of the field. Hold everything. Looks as though the signal goes against West Virginia. Well, Camp House may get another shot here. Uh, was it? It had to be. If it's going to be Boston College ball, it had to be before well, the interception. Below the waist. Oh, on the return. On the return. All right. It'll be first and ten. So the bottom line is that West Virginia gets the ball, but instead of upfield around the 30, it's back at the 13-yard line. There's the intercept. 
Nice run by Lockwood. Without Camphouse making that stop, that was all over. Lockwood yeah. would have went right down the near sideline for six. And Camphouse sliding over to take the punishment and make the tackle. 37 to 16, 342 left to go. Mountaineers are going to win this one, go four and three on the year. And extend their winning streak to three straight games as Andre Johnson rolls it up to the 15-yard line. Jeff Baker makes the tackle for Boston College, and the turnovers have really hurt BC more than they have West Virginia today. Although that one, let's face it, was not a critical one. You know the one that killed them was when they had it down there, fourth and goal from about the half-yard line. That's the one that killed them. Yep. The most basic play in football, the snap. The center snap was botched up. And that really took the steam out of Boston College. Running the football now for the Mountaineers of West Virginia is Fedorko, number 26. No, that's Evans. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's Evans. Thompson made the stop. You're right, that looked like 26 coming out of the pack. That was 36, Aaron Evans. Penalty yardage, West Virginia, not uh, too happy with that total tonight. 10 for 102. Boston College, 4 for 35. No place like home. Now Boston College is called a timeout. Uh, Jack McNell, uh, never giving up the ship, is called a timeout. His team has one left. The situation is this. West Virginia leads about 21 points. They have the ball on their own 16-yard line, and it's third down and seven. And the Mountaineer has just shot off his musket. Brings a cheer from the crowd assembled across the way. The West Virginia folks are about the only ones still hanging around with smiles on their faces. Next week, Penn State. You know, Tony, you almost wish that Joe Paterno's team had to play this weekend so they wouldn't have two weeks to get ready for West Virginia. Or have them play uh, in Morgantown instead of State College. Mm. But nonetheless, that's the way the schedule falls, and West Virginia, I'm sure, will be there next Saturday to play them. They're looking forward to that football game. The fans around the Mountain State, I think, have something to get excited about the, the rest of this season and also for next year. Major Harris really looks like a, a veteran at quarterback now. And he'd better be a veteran if he's under pressure. And he'll just take the football and run it out of bounds. Gray made the tackle on him, number 96 for the Boston College team. Peter Gray, defensive tackle out of Swarthmore, Pennsylvania. And Major Harris, who his afternoon's work is done, he'll trot over and let Lance Carrion take over with a punt. Carrion again will be punting from his own end zone. Here come the Eagles in an all-out rush. Lance gets it away. Waddle, standing back at his own 40, picks it up. And he won't be going far. Making the tackle for the Mountaineers is number 53, Teddy Kester, reserve linebacker. And Boston College takes over. First and 10 at their own 44-yard line. Camphouse gets one more shot at it. 237 left to go in this football game that West Virginia is going to win. Biggest problem now for the assembled masses will be vacating the area. The roads around here are not exactly the best. They're not too wide and there's not too many of them. Camp House, plenty of time. West Virginia just falling back. And the catch is made by Cherry. He's got a first down at the 25-yard line. That's Marcus Cherry, his first reception of the day. Well, Camp House had all day to pick him out. You got Edwards in there, Orlando, Lockwood, White, Stacy Smith. Only three down, uh, three down linemen for West Virginia. And Waddle is limping, and Boston College is called, I believe, their last timeout. Waddle will leave the field. Coming in to replace him will be Chuck Gregory. Number 16, Waddle, has, has had a tough afternoon. He's taken some pretty tough hits out there. And Don Nealon calls his defensive team over. Now the referee is saying, no, 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 there's no timeout. Well, then why did they signal a timeout? Well, taking Waddle off the field. Gene Steratore out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania, the back judge today. He came over and said, no, guys, you can't do that. West Virginia trying to get a little extra time in there. Camp House running for his life again, faking the pass, and Stacy Smith brings him down at the 22-yard line, and he keeps him in bounds, which keeps the clock rolling. 
Gene Sturator. I've seen him on the basketball court a few yeah. times. He's retired, I guess, from basketball officiating now. He's just strictly staying with football. A lot less running around for the most part. Camp House looks for a tight end and has his man. That's Kyle Hudgens, reserve tight end. He's out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Will that be a first down? It will. Boston College first and ten. One forty-nine to go in this football game. Little Mountaineers will return to Morgantown with big smiles on their faces. I think they'll enjoy this for about half a day, and then it's time to get ready for Penn State. Lonnie Brockman and company have him down. Also in there for West Virginia is Turnbull. Turnbull and Brockman, 87 to 97. And Camp House had no time. I'd say I would love to be a defensive lineman right now. And a linebacker. All you're doing is rushing after one man. Ronaldo Turnbull, those big long arms, he just kind of grabbed him up there like an octopus. Most impressive victory of the season as Boston College calls timeout one more time, their last timeout. The Mountaineers with a 21-point lead at Boston College. I don't think anybody can question the maturity now of Major Harris at quarterback and the fact that this West Virginia team is going to be a, a really tough rival for anybody left on their schedule, including Penn State. Yep. That's where Don Nealon wants them. He said, going into this football game, this is where I want to be. I don't have any major injuries. I feel good going into these football games. That's all, I want. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not asking for any other kind of an advantage. I just want to be healthy with my players. They're gelled on offense now. Defense has been playing well. Let's go play them. Yep, and they will be there. <laughs> Boy, will the Mountaineers ever be there in Happy Valley next week. John Stroy and Major Harris and all the offensive linemen and the quarterback shaking hands now on the West Virginia sidelines. Good effort by everybody this afternoon. Second down and eight. Camp House back to pass. He's sacked again, and it's Brad Hunt this time. Nice gesture by Brad once he had his man. He didn't really try and pound him. <laughs> he, he hit David Grant harder with that headbutt than he did the quarterback. Well, those belly butts? The belly five or something well, like they, that. They meant to be headbutts, but the belly's got in the way. Tony. <laughs> Brad coming over from his tackle stop. Just making sort of, the hit. Just sort of laid him down. And here comes David Grant, and this... <laughs> Finally getting to the man is Turnbull. Oh, it's a field day out there for the Mountaineer defensive line right now. Camp House, if I were he, I'd, I'd want to get out of there. No timeouts left. That'll be it. And is that Camp House down on the ground? Yes, it is. Now, Ronaldo Turnbull is not, a, not exactly a light person to have ride your back to the turf. There's less than a minute to go now, and the clock has stopped. That would be a shame, frankly, if Camp House is injured. What a waste that would be. He led them down the field very impressively when he took over for the starting quarterback, Power. But it's been all West Virginia today, as you can see in the total yardage figures. And the impressive thing is, Tony, it's the old cliche. The coaches say run to set up the pass, but that has been really true today for West Virginia primarily a running effort but when Major Harris has passed how well he's done coming into this game BC's defense was allowing 361 yards per game and today West Virginia has 448 and Mark Camphouse is still down and he's not moving too well meanwhile when play does resume for the record it'll be power at quarterback for Boston College Mike Power Jack McNell huddled over his quarterback now. It, boy, that looks, oh, who can tell, but they've taken a lot of time, and Camp House is still down and not looking too spry. There are his totals for the day. Not bad completion percentage, but a lot of that has come against prevent defenses, too. Well, Tom Don Nealon runs his record here at Alumni Stadium against the Eagles to 4-0. 
with today's victory, 37-16 on score right now as they bring Camp House up. Looks as though shoulder, perhaps, well, or the wind knocked out of them. That would be the best thing if it was just the wind. Maybe both. They're working on that left shoulder. Remember, Camp House is a right-handed thrower, but I... Well, I know he's seen his last action today. They're going to be very, very ginger with that shoulder. And they're going to help Mark Camphouse off. He deserves a round of applause. He's, he's done his best here today, and he's taken some hard shots out there, too. Nice gesture there by the Mountaineers. Robert Pickett. Not sure Camphouse heard him, but Jack McNell looks like a guy who's been through the ringer today, doesn't he? So Power is back in there by default at quarterback with 57 seconds left in the football game. Power runs away from David Grant, throws on the run, has a receiver, but the receiver is out of bounds, and that is Chuck Gregory. And there's a penalty marker dropped back at the 41-yard line. It could be against Boston College. David Grant says it is. And if so... They'll just refuse it. West Virginia will take the football and take a snap and kneel down and run the clock out. And that's the situation. Penalty will be refused. So it'll be offense. It's a loss of down. First down. West yep. Virginia football yeah. at the 45. The illegal forward pass. He was over the line of scrimmage when he let that one go. West Virginia's got 49 seconds left. They put Benny Reed in the ball game. Basically, just going to do a couple of plays here and run this clock out. Yeah, Ben Reed, I'm sure he'd rather come in in a more crucial situation and get some more playing time, but this is, these are the situations that reserve quarterbacks are for. Help run out the clock, and that's all Ben will do. He'll just take the snap and kneel down. Lots of reserve offensive linemen in there now, and some starters. Grannis Bell, I believe, is in there that play, and Andre Johnson is in there. Clock continuing to roll. They'll have to do it one more time in order to run things out. So the West Virginia Mountaineers will win this football game 37-16. to They'll be 4-3, and three and they'll be at Beaver Stadium in State College, Pennsylvania, actually University Park next Saturday. We'll have it for you on the Mountaineer Sports Network on a tape-delayed basis. Don't miss that one. And that's the old ball game. Reed kneels down, and that's it. The clock will tick off. The final seconds, and the Mountaineers are over the 500 mark for the first time since the first week of the season. The final score, West Virginia 37, Boston College 16. Tony, a great day was had by all. We'll be back to wrap it up in just a moment. 37-16 the final. Tony, some final thoughts on this conquest for the Mountaineers today. Well, we saw another step on the ladder for West Virginia's offense in terms of improvement. They came out, they took a 16-7 lead at the half. They came back in the second half. The pressure was on them because B.C. had made a change of quarterback. A lot of things uh, didn't go their way in terms of turnovers and some questionable penalties. And they're still able to outscore B.C. 21-9 in the second half. It all totals up to a 37-16 victory. So I think that Don Nealon and his coaching staff will be very happy uh, that their club has taken that next step on the ladder offensively and defensively. You really don't mention these guys because they've been playing well all season long. And I think going into the Penn State game next week, they're very happy with where they are. All right, I should say so. The Mountaineers now 4-3. and three. Boston College falls to 4-4. Four and four. Hope you enjoyed the telecast on Mountaineer Sports Network. Now for Tony Caridi, I'm Tom Meese. We'll see you next weekend from Penn State. Promotional consideration provided by PM Enterprises and by the Holiday Inn of Morgantown. This has been a Mountaineer Sports Network presentation.